beloved one i hope you are doing well i want us to take a short reading from the book of psalms chapter 127 it says if god's grace doesn't help the builders they will labor in vain to build a house if god's mercy doesn't protect the city all the centuries will circle it in vain it's really a senseless to work so hard from morning till late at night toiling to make a living for fear of not having enough now god can provide i want you to see this it says god can provide for his devoted lovers even while they sleep now this tells us of the great things that we enjoy anytime we come into God's presence. It tells us of the blessings we enjoy anytime we are with God. And then we can do this through prayer, through the word of God, and even as we are about listening to that. So I want us to do something. We are going to like this video. So then please hit on the like button if you have not done so. This helps YouTube recommend this video out there to anyone so everyone can have access to it also by doing this you help in the spread of the gospel and of the good work of this channel then don't forget to leave a comment in that comment section hit on that subscribe button if you haven't done so and you are new here and then get on to the notification bell and do us the favor of tapping on it too you were blessed son stay blessed Ali, the ministry of jesus um, once and again I I have the opportunity to study very carefully what Jesus did how he did ministry when he walked upon the earth because the Bible tells us that we should look unto Jesus calls him the author and the finisher of our faith in other words everything we do in this kingdom life must be within the jurisdiction of that which was demonstrated by the Christ himself he not only came as a substitute for us he came as a model he came as a masterpiece of God's intention so that through the ministry of the Holy Spirit we will align everything we do to be consistent with both his ideology and his doings it is only when that happens listen carefully that God can be glorified Jesus has become for us the model of that which can satisfy God God can only be satisfied in the Christ and in anyone who does anything that is reflective of the Christ the only basis for God to be satisfied in the life of a man is when Jesus is being glorified and when every activity that man is engaged in is a reflection of both the person the character of the Christ so I've been studying the ministry of Jesus and I'm telling you um, Jesus is truly and literally the greatest inspiration in my life his his model his understanding every time I study the Gospels I am I am amazed at his spirituality his intelligence his paradigm and his approach to life his approach to people his definition and his approach of ministry his approach of success everything about Jesus Christ inspires me and so as I study him I check my life I check koinonia I check the things that we do against the benchmark of the model the reference that has been created and if at any point I find myself short of that standard or I find our leadership and our approach in the ministry short of that standard, then he does not repent to look like us. Are we, to, are we together now? The responsibility is upon us to realign ourselves so that we reflect him in his fullness. And um, it never tires me. I've, I've studied the gospel again and again. I don't know how many times. But quite frankly, every time you study scripture with a new light and a new understanding it seems to me as though the higher you rise in the spirit the more certain things in scripture open up to you in a way you will never believe they were there not because you are not aware of their reality 
but there is an understanding that makes certain things now open to you because you now have both an experience with God and experience with life that can help you understand those things more personally so the more I grow spiritually the more emotionally connected I am I I no longer just study the Bible for the 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 spiritual education necessarily I I, I see myself I when I study the Bible I'm, I'm very emotional about it many times I'll have to just close the Bible and fight tears because I look at these scriptures and I know how true it is let me tell you something the more you grow in God the more emotionally connected you are to the study of the word you no longer study just for information you you literally become emotionally connected to it because you are rising at a frequency that is closer to the state Jesus and the apostles were when they wrote this so when you study the Bible from that height you are able to not only understand what they are writing but discern the motivation you can literally feel the emotions around the things that they wrote and this is what has been happening to me as I study the Gospels and um, I rediscovered a few things there are things I have known but then for me the Lord nailed it in a way that blessed me so powerfully and part of that is what I'll be sharing tonight briefly and then trust God that we pray hallelujah I have studied many concepts I have taught them um, the concept of sin the concept of holiness the concept of righteousness the concept of the kingdom kingdom advancement the concept of success and prosperity the concept of faith all of these are very important kingdom concepts that must be understood by the believer because if any of these concepts are misunderstood or inaccurately understood they will sponsor error in the life of a believer though well-meaning you will find yourself with a frame of understanding that may shortchange you from experiencing and living the fullness of the life that jesus gave us hallelujah and um philippians chapter 2 please we're going to read three and four as a foundation for the things that i'll be sharing tonight my teaching tonight seeks to build in us in a greater measure the character of the christ as we prepare to wrap up the year we have seen the hand of god in remarkable ways and god has really helped us we have enjoyed his benevolence and his grace once and again he will bring in words like this that file us that build us that align us so that our work will be very productive say amen philippians chapter 2 i'll read 3 and 4 pay attention it says let nothing be done through strife or vain glory but in lowliness of mind let each esteem other better than themselves verse 4 look not every man on his own things but every man also on the things of others when you find the newer translations it's an attempt to say that you pay attention to the needs of others above your need i i want to talk um well i would just start here but I, I'm, I'm really not going to dwell there on the concept the root cause of majority of the challenges that believers have listen please the root cause of jealousy the root cause of envy listen carefully the root cause of lust and addictions the root cause of sin the root cause of um, selfishness the root cause of covetousness you see all of these attributes listen let me teach you something you see spiritual things we know it by now 
are more grave and more serious whether good or bad than physical things are we together now did you know that um god forbid but come if it's an example please if i get this lady pregnant what did i say is an example listen are we together now i'm very serious tonight laugh now because i'm sure that you will not need to laugh again as we continue if i get this lady pregnant for instance listen it will look more regrettable because there is something obvious her stomach will protrude are we together but if i lost after this lady now she doesn't get pregnant by me lusting after her so i will think i am free are, are we are we together now if i slap this lady and there are marks of my hands on her face you call it wickedness and you say this guy is wicked because there is a physical expression but if i hold bitterness and jealousy bitter anger and rage sorry my dear against her it's easy for you to think i'm a spiritual man are we together now let me tell you something i have discovered bless you darling you can pick up your it is it is easier it is easier listen in fact in my opinion i know that sin is sin but in my opinion what the bible calls the sin of the spirit have you read that there is the sin of the flesh that can have physical evidences they can have regrettable consequences immediately you are punished for it you receive embarrassment for it and it's over but what the bible calls the sin of the spirit that may not find any physical expression is more deadly listen is more dangerous it has the highest ability to choke your spiritual progress are we together now and for many believers when you begin to walk in the kingdom because you are focusing on other things like the anointing you know faith trying to understand redemption understanding the Pauline epistles understanding a lot of things you know the miraculous visions prophecies the gifts of the spirit because of your focus on these charismatic dimensions of truths or the principles of the kingdom very little attention is paid to these very deep spiritual things in fact usually we interpret them to be basic we just feel i mean that that's that, let's let's talk of great things like power miracles etc etc but as you rise in god you will discover that the text of your dealing with god will no longer be physical things are we together when god begins to deal with you at a mature dimension you will find out that his concentration will be the motivation behind everything he's not as interested um, in the physical expression of it as it is the root cause the motivation behind everything that you do if you're following me say amen and so i found out that the root cause of all of these things not most of them all of them is in one word one simple word it's called self-centeredness we call it self but the word is self-centeredness not selfishness self-centeredness everybody say it self-centeredness this is the root cause of sin any kind this is the root cause of any expression of the flesh in fact it is the doorway to the flesh finding expression when you are studying the spirit man and the man of the flesh it's impossible for you to study the man of the spirit and the man of the flesh without understanding the foundation listen the bible says the axe is laid at the root of the tree so when jesus is dealing with a matter he does he forgets about the expressions and goes to the root of the tree and attempts to hit it right there because when the root is destroyed then all the leaves will dry off naturally are we together now self-centeredness our human nature has been so designed 
that the motivation listen subconsciously behind every activity we do on earth is to find a way of gratifying our desires be it pleasures be it a sense of ambition whatever it is and that is not wrong in itself except for the fact that in God's economy listen please if at any point you are found pursuing anything that does not have a direct bearing to the advancement of the kingdom and the enthronement of Christ experientially that entire activity is useless are we together now listen I have discovered as I study the Bible and I've read my Bible a number of times every story captured in scripture was only captured because of the appearance of that story with respect to Jesus and his purposes many things happened during different dispensations but certain stories were omitted because they did not have a direct bearing to the advancement of the kingdom are we together so every story that found its way to the bible only found its way because of the alignment of that story to the purposes of the kingdom that means in god's economy please listen the degree to which you are featured at any given dispensation is the degree to which your life and everything about your life can contribute to enthroning christ are we together now so if the let's say the history of the church in zaria is to be written from 2014 to 2016 if the holy ghost were to inspire men to write you will find out that many important things that happen in zaria will not be recorded there are we together god will only focus on the activities that were centered around his kingdom when you study I mean people who have read archaeology and history and all of that you will know that concurrently at the point certain things were being recorded in scripture certain historical things were happening at that same time but the Bible did not see the need to include them because they had no contribution in the understanding of Christ and his purposes are we together now so if God is going to write a little story about your life, you will think he will write when you went to the market. You will think he will write when you went to ABU. Anything that cannot relate to his purposes in your life will not be captured. Are you getting what I'm saying now? This, brothers and sisters, is the foundation of our work with God. And this state I just explained to you is the greatest enemy of the flesh. The flesh thrives upon ownership. The flesh thrives upon um, personal ambition. Listen, listen, you have to understand this if you want to be spiritual. So the Bible says in 1 John chapter 2, when you read from verse 16, he says, love not the world. This is John the Apostle now teaching us. He says, love not the world neither the things listen that are in the world it didn't say don't have them 15 it's, it says love not the world neither the things that are in the world right it says if any man love the world the love of the father is not in him then he breaks down these things into three categories for all that is in the world 16 the lust of the flesh category 1 the, the challenges that you experience by reason of having a material body. The limitations that you are bound to experience because you possess a body. Number two, he says the loss of the eyes. Then number three, the pride of life. He says is not of the father, but is of the world. So John the beloved having been mentored directly by jesus christ and understood the 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 very essence of the kingdom life is teaching us in his epistle and he's saying look if you want to be spiritual people you must come to a point where this self must be destroyed trying to trying to do physical things 
to address jealousy address sin address this all those things will only lead to legalism and religion the core motivation behind every one of these things believe me brothers and sisters is self-centeredness self-centeredness the need to see yourself exalted that's why we fight if you don't call me apostle i fight you why because self self wants to be glorified that's why we want titles are we together now seeing then that we are in this world but not of the world there must be a mechanism for us to be able to effectively take advantage of all the tools that have been prepared before us without being contaminated by their effects in our spirit tools such as prosperity tools such as influence are we together now tools such as the anointing all of these are tools but then there must be a foundational build up so that while we engage constantly in this earth using these tools we shield ourselves from the effect that using these things outside of this understanding creates on people so there is something money will do to you if your motivation is wrong are we together now that is dangerous there is something anointing will do to you when your motivation is wrong being prosperous with a self-centered understanding is the recipe for destruction being anointed with a self-centered mentality is a recipe for destruction are we together self let me show you something apostle james was teaching us something and he um when i when i when i saw it uh, for me it, it it touched me um what is that that's that's not not um not james help me holy spirit second timothy please give us second timothy that should be timothy right second timothy three second timothy three i think i'm right second timothy three please give it to us from verse one to four it says this know also that in the last days perilous times shall come verse 2 for men shall be what lovers of their are you seeing this now men shall be lovers of their own selves and as a result many other things will follow because they are lovers of their own self they will be covetous they will be boasters. They will be proud. Do you understand the context of that scripture now? The foundation is lovers of themselves. Lovers of themselves is not a point. It is the reason why these other things will happen. Because men shall be lovers of them own, their own selves. That love for themselves will make them covetous. So when they see somebody else's thing, they say, ah, this person does not deserve it it should be mine it should be me are we together then it says boasters proud blasphemers disobedient to parents unthankful ingratitude god you tried but you can do more unholy uh-huh without natural affection truth breakers false accusers look at them incontinent fierce rageful why are you touching my reputation do you not know i am apostle joshua selman lovers of themselves so that aggression is not a family thing this is what is leading to it why you are angry with everybody despisers of those that are good can you imagine that a man can love himself to a point that he despises good people verse 4 traitors heady high-minded lovers of pleasure more than lovers of now the key word there is more than the key word is not pleasure the key word is not god the key word is more than more than 
is like a meter your love for pleasure gets to a point where it moves beyond its jurisdiction and overrides to a point where your love for God is subject to your love for things your love for cars your love for houses your love for all of this self-centeredness the need the craving to be on the scene the need the craving to be the epicenter of everything the need for recognition the need for honor the need to occupy the position of God listen this is what happened to Lucifer I will ascend to the stars I will be like the most high that was the manifesto of Lucifer and while he said that for the first time God would find somebody in heaven who was not aligned to his purposes it was no longer about the program of God it was Lucifer I will be I'm not interested whether I'm sent on errand I want to be like the most high and he was charged with treason and the Bible says there was war in heaven and Lucifer was judged and was casted down this attitude is best described in the story of the prodigal son listen let me tell you how you know you are self-centered the language of self-centeredness is me myself when when you no longer care the consequences of your pleasure on others and on the kingdom regardless of who suffers it let me get what i want is self-centeredness god is helping someone tonight you are not happy because i'm talking about you and me self-centeredness believe me is the root of sin self-centeredness is the root of these attributes of the flesh that so destroy us they are the weights the bible says we should lay aside but you don't say i will stop jealousy uh -uh. they are effects the cause for that is a life of self-centeredness brothers and sisters look at me is the reason why some of you here looking at me even if you have to kill to make money you will do it why not because you are not a christian something in you listen let me tell you what self-centeredness does it creates an imaginary pressure and mounts that pressure on you and you keep pushing yourself to do say and be things that are unnecessary because you believe that your sense of worth is tied to those things that's why we do very stupid things self-centeredness is why pastors fight themselves it's why business people fight themselves it's why a husband and a wife cannot live in peace because they are self-centered everybody brings his idea it has to be my way that's another language of self-centeredness my way it must be my way listen the moment you find yourself whether saying or being driven by these motivations i want to glorify myself my pleasure it must be my way then you know that self-centeredness is eating you up there are people here who think it's just a temperament issue they say it's just my personality type that that is complete nonsense don't let the devil fool you that is that is self-centeredness the core the very control button of evil in your life are we together there are people here you've been trained to have things happen your way if it is not your way to hell with it that motivation has driven us into all sorts of things when when um, we were being taught evangelism in the seminary this is what happened how many of you have heard of something called four spiritual laws one green pamphlet right that's a very good book because from the first page they will show a man's heart in an arrow and then they show a chair inside then they show you sitting there that's exactly that's the clearest description of self-centeredness 
the God of your own self. Now, let me tell you something. The devil is smart. He angles self-centeredness so it does not exactly look like you are taking the place of God. Do you understand? It's very subtle. So you think, I love God, I pray. When I sin, I run to God. That's the point. You are not running to God because you love him. You are running to God because of fear that you think that sin has opened a door for something to happen to you. It's still you. I want to go to heaven. It's still you. It looks spiritual, but it's still you. Are you seeing? You are still self-centered. That is spiritual and you are mentioning heaven does not mean that it's of God. When it is about you, Are we together? So I'm trying to walk in holiness so that, um, I mean, I won't do this. If this lady waves me, I don't even want to look at her face because by doing that, God will see me. It's still self-centeredness. It's just a more religious form of it. It's still self-centeredness. Are we together? I'm preparing a nice message and I'm praying in tongues, fasting three days dry. But the reason is so that everybody who comes for koinonia will know that there is a man of God. A, a spiritual form of self. The moment it is for you, for your glory, for your reputation. Let me tell you, I can tell you how self-centered we are because of how much we, we fight to make things work in our life. You see the way you take the issue of your success too personal. As if your name is on the line itself. It says, For I have been crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I, but Christ that lives in me. Are we together? Watch this. If this comes, Sam. If this is Sam's handkerchief. Now, I love Sam with all my heart. If this is Sam's handkerchief and it falls. Now, I love him and I love the handkerchief, but I do not think I will be so distracted to run and come and pick this handkerchief. Are we together? If the falling of the handkerchief becomes so personal that my reputation is tied to it, is it really Sam's handkerchief? It's mine. I'm trying to claim it. That's what we do with our lives. The level to which we are forcing ourselves to make it and force ourselves to walk the way we take the issue of our personal success so personal as if our world will crumble the way we guard our name with such fragility is a sign that we are self-centered that level of investment cannot just be for God we are doing it for ourselves thank you okay let us are we together When people become overconscious of their reputation, it's self-centeredness. It's self-centeredness. When God began to reveal these things to me, I was amazed. And I said, my God, that means who is free? Who truly is free? I looked at my own life and I said, my God, imagine how many times I've been caught up with these things. Well-meaning, sincere, very sincere you see the key to walking with god is to tremble at his word and be open when you stand before god and foolishly excuse yourself it is still self-centeredness so when the word of god is coming many of us just tap ourselves and like wow i hope they are hearing are you joking this is a message for everybody it's a message you should sit down and have a sober reflection upon look at your life and see the motivation behind the things you are doing and you will see the uncomfortable truth that you have to admit tonight that you have been self-centered absolutely self-centered i know you say it is for him but the truth it is is that you only say it as a cliche but in reality it is for you self-centeredness There are so many things that have happened in the body of Christ that look spiritual and looks as if we are doing it for God. When 
the scribes and the Pharisees caught the woman in adultery listen they were scholars they were dragging her to Jesus you would think they were so passionate about Moses and keeping the law they were looking for a way to destroy the ministry of Jesus so they did not care who was the scapegoat that be used that was being used let me tell you something about self self-centeredness self-centeredness is an expression of wickedness because in an attempt to get your desire you do not care who suffers and you do not care what goes wrong in the life of anybody is the hallmark of self-centeredness when my desire becomes a passion that whatever suffers in the process whether god or man it's none of my business that's why people kill to get political positions they don't mind they go to a herbalist and he says bring five children and they go and steal the hard end children of five families slaughter them while they are slaughtering these children they don't care all they are seeing is the office the apex i tell you that's where it comes from self-centeredness When a man leaves his wife and goes to carry another prostitute and travel, his self-centeredness is not just pleasure, it's self-centeredness. Are we together? When somebody bribes in the office and corners billions of naira into his pocket and returns back rejoicing, calling himself a rich man, it is not just money, it is self-centeredness. Because that's somebody's salary in his pocket, he does not care. That somebody has a wife and children, he does not care. All he's concerned about is, let me get this, is it not how we all are? How many times have we not paid attention to the effect of our pursuit on the advancement of the kingdom and the well-being of the people? Oh, let me talk to you. And I, I say this, please don't take this personal. But I want to talk to you. And, and, and do you know, do you know, sincerely speaking, the worst, the, the worst victims of this are ladies. Sisters, say amen. That's right. Because of your emotional nature and your cravings to have your desires met, I've seen ladies who don't care what goes wrong, provided they get it. If you tell a lie, to get the withdrawn money no problem let me just wait if i must corner somebody to buy the iphone 6 iphone 7 whichever one no problem we are more concerned about the arrival of our desires regardless of what suffered for it to arrive that's the apex of self-centeredness have you not seen visitors who come to your house they come to beg rice and you tell them honestly i just have one mudu and you would think they'll be sympathetic and say oh i know if it's one mudu it's okay they also say hey, but we, i can still have it you see people like that and at a point you just say okay no problem let me just give you and you give them and they collect they say thank you and they are going <sighs> we are like that we are laughing but that's how we are so says the word of god we are spiritual but he's helping us to rise That's what will make someone come and see someone's food the last meal and just eat it and pour water in the plate and keep it you were hungry but you never believed that someone else may have a desire and as far as your do you know let me tell you something brothers and sisters i have worked among people leadership has opened me up to people there are people whose hearts are bad not because they are bad people themselves the, the 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 appetite to getting their lost satisfied is very terrible anything that will make it happen let it happen if god will suffer to hell with him are we together yeah so when a pastor sits down and tells people all of you bring five five hundred thousand and does not care that this person is a student and it's not even earning up to five thousand and says look you better use your faith
bring your 500,000. It looks spiritual. And people claim it's for God. It's not for God. When it is for God, you follow God's way. God has a system. Are we together? Yeah. Someone was talking to me, um, I think some weeks ago, and he was just talking about churches and all of that. And then he told me a few things. He was just mentioning different churches. And I looked at him. I said, I want to ask you a question. I said, why are you talking about these things? And he said, no, 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 no. It's not like I have any problem. I said, you do. Are you kidding me? You do. Because the God you claim to be serving, who you are defending so personally is quiet. So I wonder why you, who is supposed to be his representative, is so personal about the issue. Yes, I know the lady wore trousers, but why have you taken it so personal? It's like a mission you gave yourself. Are you really sure you are doing that for God? Okay, the lady covered her hair and does not wear trousers. What is your own business? We do a lot of things that look spiritual, but brothers and sisters, the foundation of it is self. Self. The need for self. So we fight jealousy ladies brothers jealousy whenever you see someone with something nice something in you reacts jealousy self-centeredness it would have been me why should this lady be having this when did she i mean can you imagine this guy wanting to marry her ah come on something is wrong there is a story we must tell the brother self-centeredness how about preachers we love crowds like this. We claim it's for the glory of God. But underlying it is our desires. That's why pastors put pressure on members. They come up with every kind of business schemes to force ministry to work. When you see the way they are putting pressure, this cannot be of God. It's too personal. Why don't you let God take charge of his own kingdom? Kononia is quiet this night. Myself. For me. So we go to pray. Lord, I trust you for a car. And let me tell you something. <laughs> My God. You can spiritualize. Do you know, I love the word because Jesus is the word. And the Bible says the word can discern the thoughts and the intents of the heart. Father, give me a car for your glory. And then he says, since it's for my glory, walk with my own timing. And he said, no, Lord, give me a car now for your glory. And God is saying, no, it's for my glory. Let me control the timing. I say, Lord, you, I force you by sowing a seed. Give me a car now. It's for your glory. And God said, just remove the for your glory. And say, give me a car now. Before I know what to do with you. <laughs> we think, we think because we are saying for your glory. It is spiritual. Listen, let me tell you something. Brothers and sisters, the unrestfulness in our approach to life is a sign that we don't want to fail because our ego is so tied to the failure. Are you getting that? Five o'clock, people wake up in every city while they are praying jesus i thank you this is a beautiful day what they are saying in the spirit is scapegoat how are you I'm, I'm awake today i hope i can use you today to please achieve my goals amen that's what they thought they did that's what they call devotion to ease the guilt and then they begin their work they do everything that they do and then they come back and say god i don't know why you are not doing this you have to do this and then you will take the glory we, we, we cap our self-centeredness with that statement. Be glorified. Be glorified is not just a statement. Be glorified is a state. Where you no longer are embarrassed about the outcomes of your life. The, the reason why you are responsible over them is not the fear of failure again. It's not the embarrassment. You have, you have, you have, you have died. You have died to your ambitions. It's about him. If koinonia does not work, it's no longer about Joshua Selman's ego to say, I will, maybe this guy is backsliding. Are you seeing? So the fear 
of being taught to be backsliding will now drive me to go and fast and pray and buy messages. I will think I am growing spiritually, but it's self-centeredness. That's why some of you came for koinonia this night. I know you love God. But the truth about it is that that's not the reason. Let me tell you how you know we are self-centered. Whenever we do not get our desires, our responses become ugly. Five minutes before your desire, you were trusting that the woman will not die. Lord, I know you. I take you by your word for your glory. Lord, in the name of Jesus, I am your servant. And then the person, the person dies. And all of a sudden, your ego is on the line. No, 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 no. Let's raise this person back to life. And you try and try and nothing happens. And your ego is on the line. I watch it happen to people. You prophesy to somebody, in the name of Jesus, you are going to get a job. And you see the pressure on you. Men of God prophesy like that and they go back and say, Oh God, please, let this word come to pass. It looks spiritual. It is your word. So you are in such a passion to bring it to pass so that they can say apostle prophesied and like he said it came to pass is God helping us this night are you learning something self-centeredness brothers and sisters are you seeing the damage it has caused to us sister are you seeing that this is why if you are not careful you may not marry the will of God because although in your prayer you are saying lord is only your will all that is talk in reality you have already painted the picture of the man the necessary and sufficient condition to say yes to any man you have painted it it's unbending no amount of preaching no matter how pathetic will move your mind the hardness of your heart has been glued to that image must be a millionaire then you now add and say and spiritual too just to make you feel so it no longer is about the will of god same thing for people getting jobs listen listen let me tell you don't laugh about this it's a very serious thing do you know why jesus pleased the father it was not because of his miracles it was because he was a walking expression of a body that has been dedicated for the will of God to find expression unrestrained. Here are the things that Jesus said himself. Let's look at a few scriptures. Jesus himself said this. John 17 verse 1. Please give it to us media. Let's hurry up. I want us to pray. John 17 verse 1. John 17 verse 1. These words spake Jesus and lifted up his eyes to heaven. Father, the hour is come glorify now thy son many of us will stop there and then the next thing we we'll add is amen glorify now joshua selman give him money give him fame give him increase but jesus put a comma there and said that thy son may also glorify you in other words lord it's not necessary to have to use me to prove a point but simply because i am passionate about seeing your glory revealed use me as the vehicle for that revelation ha. there are things i know that can touch the heart of god are we together there are things i know by my experience with god that touches the heart of god more than faith believe me more than acting out spiritual things is a heart that is completely surrendered to glorify God. Jesus, look at Jesus. Who though being equal with God, equal with God, I know what Jesus would have prayed at this point. Father, remember that our glory. Make sure you never forget it. I'm only here for three and a half years. I'm coming back. Make no mistakes. No new election in heaven. I am here. My position that I came to become a scapegoat doesn't mean you should take me for granted. I'm calling on you. You better answer me. Jesus submitted himself and said, glorify me. 
so that you will be glorified brothers and sisters this is the language of a life where Christ sits upon the throne of that personality do you know this is what Jesus came to give us there's been a confusion in the body of Christ about Old Testament and New Testament let me tell you if you meet Jesus today he will never talk to you about Old Testament or New Testament whether you are under grace or law is nonsense he's going to ask you one question who is seated at the throne of your heart Jesus came to deliver us the very gospel was designed to take us away from a life of self-centeredness not from a life of works no from a life of self-centeredness the motivation behind our activities being us to a life that is glued to glorifying Christ brothers and sisters I don't care whether you are in the Old Testament or new you are not born again if Christ is not seated at the throne of your heart I don't care how many times you have recited salvation prayer the essence of the coming of Jesus is not just to bring a new order the essence of the coming of Jesus is to align men back to the purposes of the kingdom where Christ himself will be seated the Lord gave me a revelation this morning both the elder brother of the prodigal son and the younger brother committed the same sin the only difference was one executed it openly whereas the other one kept it which is an example of the two kinds of believers we have both of them were tired of the leadership of their father one had the courage to express it one kept it they wanted ownership and here's what the first one said the first one said give me that self-centeredness there give me i know you gave me access but i don't want access because the access is in your name i now want it in my name give it to me the younger the elder brother did not say give it to me but it was in his heart listen i'll prove it to you when the prodigal son returned back and they were celebrating him what happened to the elder brother he became angry and this is what he said father i have served you all these years you have not even given me a small um you know a small animal cattle to slaughter for me and my friends you see the offense the self-centeredness was still there in other words lord i have served you will you not reward me see this is the imbalance of the doctrine of covenant that i always balance i've been insulted many times because of this i tell believers in terms of our personal work we are not in a covenant with god it's a relationship it is only when you talk about kingdom advancement and now bringing the operation of the principles of the kingdom then you bring covenant are we together because you see jesus gave a parable to explain that in the morning he saw some people idle and he called them to go and walk in the farm is that true he negotiated money with them that's covenant terms you walk i give you a denary later in the afternoon he saw some people idle and he said why sitters that idle he said no my employers he said go based on relationship they went because they loved him and they believed him there was no arrangement that he was going to pay them even till the 11th hour one hour to close time he still saw somebody he said go now when he started rewarding them see how he rewarded them he started with the covenant people since my agreement with you was one denary take and then he called those who went because they loved him and said since you were in this farm to promote my interest i will now decide what to give you and a person who worked for one hour received the same reward with somebody who started in the morning and the guys were angry they said no something is wrong and he said what you negotiated with me the same way you are saying lord i will serve you in ocean department my husband must come before koinonia ends thank you for that that's a covenant you will get the husband but what if god wanted to give you a husband plus an anointing and a destiny those two you robbed yourself because the motivation listen i know there are times we can tie things to god but brothers and sisters let me tell you the higher you rise with god it no longer matters whether you get results or not it now becomes his glory for your glory 
I will do anything to behold you as my king. To behold you as my king. One more time. For your glory, I will do anything just to see. I want to be where you are Got to be where you are I want to be where you are I got to be where you are John 4 34 Jesus said this John chapter 4 verse 34 Jesus said my meat is not to build a ministry he didn't say my meat is to prove that I am savior. Look at this. Do you know that every time they challenge Jesus about his, his messianic persona, did you see the way he was not under pressure to defend himself? I know what I would have done, Joshua Selman. Ah, I'll tell media, make a montage and prove to these people, gather all the miracles that have happened and tell them are you stupid is that not the power of god but i mean they met jesus the woman was caught in adultery jesus would have said but you guys are foolish don't you know that i can do word of knowledge in fact the name of the husband the name of the man that slept with her is rabbi benjamin where is he come out and people will clap and say my god hi rabbi you are the one but jesus did not see a need for that he was more concerned about that woman but he answered them in a dangerous way instead of saying i am the only one qualified to cast stones he said he who has no sin cast the first stone in other words whoever among you fits that definition cast the first stone all of them left and she was left with the only person who was to cast the stone he said, since I am qualified, I choose to let you go. Go and sin no more. That's Jesus for you. That's the Jesus we try to preach about that we don't understand. We shout and spit on people trying to preach him. Yet we don't pay attention to understand him. Are we together? The essence of Christianity, brothers and sisters, is not legalism and religion. The essence of Christianity is not even evangelism. The essence of Christianity is not heaven. The essence of Christianity is not prosperity and money. The essence of Christianity is not ministry and healing. The essence of Christianity is a life through the ministry of the Holy Spirit. Replaced from a life of self-centeredness to a life that is absolutely committed to seeing Christ enthroned first in your life and throughout every territory regardless of what your own achievement is while you do that it's nonsense it's only secondary listen when you get this thing I'm telling you you will see the power of God in your life I can tell you this is why many people are not anointed I've said it the key to the anointing is not just fasting and prayer I've seen people fast for hundreds of days you fast with yourself at the center of your heart you have only succeeded in doing a good weight loss program I assure you you are not going to touch the anointing a heart that is dedicated to seeing his glory come okay Lord this is the lady I want to marry you. I like her. But thy will. Everybody say thy will. Be done. Say thy will. This is the language of a Christ-centered life. Lord, I want to go to London. It's always been my desire. However, I realize that my life is not my own. The Bible says I've been bought with a price. You don't act as if Jesus didn't finish paying for you. He paid for you completely. In fact, whether you are born again or not, you are still his property. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness therein. Right? 
So whether through sovereign ownership or through the manifestation of the love of his son, you still belong to him. Listen to what Jesus said. My meat, this is what moves my life. My nourishment, my satisfaction is to do the will of who? Him that sent me and to finish it. I am more concerned about doing the will than enjoying any blessing that comes while doing the will. So if in the course of doing the will of God, I operate certain principles and I enjoy blessings while I'm wearing the nice suit, while I'm driving the nice car, my gaze is set on seeing him glorified. So prosperity no longer has the power to distract me because I met it on my way to pleasing God. Whether or not I met it, I am determined to still finish pleasing him. So Paul says, what then shall separate us from the love of God? Look at this. The apostle who brought himself back to life. They killed Paul. Immediately they went, he came back to life and shook himself. My God. A man who wrote two thirds of the gospel. This is what he said. For, for me to live is Christ. I don't know for you, but for me to live is Christ. Then even if I die, listen, Paul was not saying if I die as a result of armed robbery and they shoot me. If you die as a result of armed robbery, it's not gain. It's a loss because one, you are going to hell. Number two, the kingdom is not advanced through that. But that Paul was trying to say, look, my passion is to pour myself as a drink offering. And regardless of what personal results come to me or otherwise, it is secondary. So compared to the fulfillment of God's program, your marriage is secondary. That marriage that has topped the prayer list of miracle service every week. And then later, the number 27 is now, God, your will be done. Exclamation mark. After you have written everything and vented out your lust. He sees. He looks from heaven. The Holy Spirit sees our motivations. While we pray, he's watching us. While we do the things that we try to do, he's watching us. While we gossip about people, you would think it's because of a passion to see them improve. It's simply a system to show a weakness in them so that you can justify your own. That you are not willing to hand over to the cross. Let me tell you, if you want to love God, he will love me for what I'm teaching you this night. It's the key to make spiritual men. A life that is completely out. And you see, some of us, we come from cultures that the system of the culture by default makes you self-centered. Are we together? We come from cultures where the system of the culture by default was designed to make you self-centered. They look at you and say, promise, how old are you? And you say, uh, maybe I'm, 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 I'm 32, or I'm 30, or I'm 35. And they say, ah, you should have a car by now. Ah, what are you saying? You should have a car and have a five children and this. And then that challenges you. And you go back and say, Lord, they are insulting you. God said they are not insulting me. If they are insulting me, I will react. I'm not offended. I said, God, me, I'm offended. I'm serving you. <laughs> you see, we create all kinds of theological messages. Let me tell you. If he's the one taking the glory, why are you taking the shame? Listen, whoever is taking the glory should be the person taking the shame. Please help me. Why do you claim God is taking the glory but you always take the shame? Are we together? Take it half on me, David. See how we pack the shame and we claim that we are giving God the glory. We are not. There's a song in my spirit. And the shout of the earth will be your praise. God forever and the light unto all will be your wonderful name. All the glory, Lord, is yours. God forever, all the glory is yours. Listen, Lord Jesus, if I remain barren like this, I give you praise. I will never stop serving you, but it is your reputation. So let the pressure go to him. Are we together? The moment people look at you and say, are you a woman or a man? 
direct the shame to him but you sit down and absorb the shame and say god give me a man child or i die and god says this thing you are doing is not for my glory it's spiritual you are sincere i'll show you why many people never get rich they think the key is doing business they think the key is after all of these things god looks at your heart and says no sir you are better off without it than you are with it because when it comes to your heart it will possess you and tear you so you see that it's not all about imparting anointing apostle i'm not seeing crowds in my ministry i know if you speak a word the doors will open and here i'm, I'm just looking at you in your sincerity but you dared your fellowship members that you are coming to collect power like a charm and say watch me when i come back you will see what will happen to this church your self-centeredness drove you for hours on the road sweating and praying feeling spiritual and you could not wait to see me the moment you receive that anointing whether or not you thought you received it you were in a hurry and you say from today don't play with me anyhow apostle laid hands on me see the picture Aren't you surprised at what you call the sudden change when people get results? They never change suddenly. They only manifested it. I told you, the prodigal son did the same thing with the elder brother. We keep, I used to accuse the, the younger one and leave the elder brother. But I found that two of them were only different versions of the same thing. One was quiet with his own while the other one executed it. Hallelujah. Luke chapter 22, verse 42. We are going to pray. I like us to read it. This was Jesus at Gethsemane. Listen, listen, listen. There are two things here that we must understand. We are going to read it. But the first thing you need to understand is Jesus had his own will. It is okay to have your will. It is okay to have your desires. Only that your desires must come under divine scrutiny. And if need be, give way for the will of God to prevail. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? Yeah. Your desires are only worthy of execution when they find themselves in harmony with the divine will of God. If at any point your desires, no matter how intelligently constructed, if there is a difference from your desires and God's desires, one must bow. And for many of us, largely it's been God's desires bowing. So salary leads you to the job. Are we together? You look at the lady and say, Kai, I like the way this lady speaks. Don't you think she'll be a nice wife? You see, let me tell you something, brothers. Let me give you a frank advice. If you keep being carnally minded, I give you two guarantees. Guarantee number one, you will miss out on the will of God. Two, you are going to pay for your foolishness when it has to do with marriage. You have to take your eyes away from carnality and focus on God. I saw that lady if you go eight be careful be very very careful I know what I'm saying doesn't make sense to many of us but you ask many people who are sadly regretting missing the will of God there is no price that is too great to walk in the will of God father if thou be willing Remove this cup from me. Here's the language of spiritual. Find expression in our lives. Nevertheless, not my will. 
I have a will. I have a desire. But nevertheless, not my will. Lord, your will be done. According to my desire, I plan to own a house in every state in Nigeria. But Lord, I bring that will to your scrutiny. Does this fit in the master plan of your blueprint for my life? And if at any point it's not part of it, I drop my ego. I drop my ego. These are men and women who will be used by God in this end time. Let me tell you, those who will be used in this end time are not just those who understand revelations and mysteries. Because the Bible says knowledge will cease, prophecy will cease. Those who will carry strange mantles in this season are men and women who God can obstruct their life at any point without having no need to explain it. There are too many of us who put God like a defense. Lord, tell me why. I should leave Zaria now and we put our hands in our pocket. I'm waiting for you. And then you have to come and God says, all right, uh, take it easy. The reason is because I have seen something. I, say, ah, I don't understand. Clarify. When you make God that slow to birth his purposes through you, there are dimensions you will never enter. And the spirit drove Jesus. He didn't say, Jesus, are you in harmony with me? Let's go to the wilderness. You are going to get power there. If you want God to explain to you the reason why he's doing everything in your life, your life will be too slow for impact. You have to start moving and let your mind catch up and say, Lord, your thoughts towards me are thoughts of good and not of evil. I don't have to wait until I understand you are too good to destroy me. You are too good to destroy me. So whether you are in the valley of the shadow of death, rather than sitting down and, and just talking and say, God, you serve Kai. If I were an unbeliever, by now, I would have done something. God, do you know it's because I'm a Christian that I'm here? It's not like I don't know where Babalao is. All those stupid statements that we make when we are under fire, is a sign that the fire is roasting our self-centeredness. That's why the Bible says, when we walk through the fire, you won't rush it. It has to burn off that dross so that when you come out like gold, the life that I now live, I live by the faith of the Son of God. Five years after marriage, no child, and people come. And you know, people are so naughty, they can say something and say, ah, Madam, you are serving God. What is all this one? At least go, go for koinonia now. Eh? Apostle is anointed. He can, is it pride? What is stopping you? And then after listening to those things, you can go back and cry and say, Oh God, give me a child or I die. No. You say, Father, a child or no child, let me tell you one truth. Me and you, we are stuck to air forever. A child is too small a reason for me to put my relationship with you on the line. How many people have seen carry over and left God? They say, What, what is the use? The day I served God, I failed. When I didn't serve God, I succeeded. And you hear preachers stand on stage and preach nonsense. Nonsense! Is that all your life is about? Why do you compare your relationship with God with academics? Is it ever a match? Why do you compare your relationship with God with marriage? Why do you compare your relationship with God with a job? Is, is our self-centered mundane pursuit that reduce God to be equal with these things. God will never, I cannot reduce God to the issues of my life, the petty issues of my life and say, God, you are uh, uh, me. Ask him, ask him, you are spiritual people. Will I ever open my mouth and tell God he's not faithful? Why? That what happened? Just because there was no tea to eat, you, to, tea to drink and bread to eat, you carry the Bible and run around heaven. Oh God, are you giving me tea or I should tear my Bible? Is this your word? And God says, now nah, well, what is all this one? Just because of tea you are shouting? Self-centeredness. This is why the anointing does not work in the life of people. This is why God does not lift certain people. Inside, outside, online, you are hearing me and the Lord is speaking to you.
can your will bend to the will of God look at me if your will cannot bend to the will of God you are carnal it's not an insult it's a description you are carnal and self-centered let me tell you how you know your will has bent to the will of God when sacrifice no longer becomes an issue in your life if God says Joshua Selman remove the sim in your phone now and give somebody this phone I don't say oh God see let's be real me I'm trying let me, I, I want to show you why many of us are carnal the ease with which you release things is a measure of how much you are self-centered and I'm not talking of small things your tongue singlet God says give say, ah, after all I was going to even burn it so let me give this guy that's not giving God will never ask you to give what they gave you. He will ask you to give what you worked for. He's very smart. If he says, if he, he, look, let me tell you something. This our God is powerful. He will allow your emotions to be connected with the gift. Then he will ask you to release it. God will never ask you to release what you are not emotionally connected to. Because it doesn't make sense. The essence is not the giving. The essence is your heart giving him space to find expression. When Satan comes to you, he studies the things that have not been surrendered to God. That becomes his weapon of mass destruction in your life. Hallelujah. Let me tell you something. I stand before the God of heaven and I lie not. If the Lord asks me now and says, Son, let this be your last sermon as Joshua Selman. In the name of Jesus Christ, the resurrected Lord, I'm standing before him. I will not lie to you. When I drop this mic, no committee council meeting will make me pick a mic again to preach. I'll cry because I have a lot of passion for this, but I love him more than that. If you like, carry placard, bring back apostle, move around with it and say, No, you must come back. The demon that manipulated your mind, you must come back. I said, I understand. You are human. If I were you, I would do the same thing. But I'm not going back again. Let me tell you, brothers and sisters, listen. I have laid down things in my life you will not believe. It's a price. Some of us, finances, whenever money is leaving you, even if you are keeping it, I don't mean you are giving it, just that you are keeping it, it's not in your pocket, you feel the pain just that is somewhere aside from your pocket that is the apex of carnality materialism and self-centeredness joined together god does not want your money what does he do with it god does not want your clothes he wants your heart because when he finds your heart he finds everything sisters let me tell you why some of you are not rising at the pace you want your life is full of so much carnality it's not an insult you love god but the truth about it is there are many shrines and idols in your heart you have surrounded them so much you would dare not even allow the voice of god interrupt anything lord don't come and interrupt my program i have my life all planned out same thing with the brothers that's why people are confused in nigeria they don't know what to do with their lives they claim they are hearing God. They claim they are walking with God. But their lives are very clear that they are moved by insecurities and sociological pressures to show they are successful. Are we together? The quest to buy a car. The quest to get married. The quest to have children. You have all girls. And somebody is asking you, Ah, Kilo Day, we need girls and boys. So, and you now turn and land the warning on your wife. Say, madam, you had that thing, please. I'm tired of this embarrassment. Oh yeah, let's pray. Lord, give us a child for your glory. No, give us a child for my ego. My masculinity is being insulted and I want to use you to cure it. And God says, no way. I'm not that cheap. Brothers and sisters, this night, I want you to come to a place where the anthem of your life is nevertheless not my will but your will be done you find peace in your life i like job job lost everything in his life as if that were not enough you can lose any other thing if you have your health you are okay 
he lost his health dogs would come and lick the source of job do you know what that means imagine seeing aliko dangote on the streets of zaria and these dogs that roam around licking him and then his wife standing by him with a dark dirty wrapper and people look and say job you where were the friends you helped and job sat down there and the wife was so attached to her reputation and she said job curse god and die and job said uh -uh, uh -uh. though he slay me though he slay me i know i've been embarrassed my ego has been stung till there's no ego yet will i trust him all the days of my appointed time i will wait until my change comes the three hebrew boys said oh king let it be known unto you that our god will deliver us we know that there is a provision in him to deliver us however even if aha uh -huh, your faith equation does not call that one you call even if doubt hey, nothing my husband must come december lord i tell you i've sown seed i am even taking communion please don't give god headache with all these stories save yourself all that immaturity say lord i give you praise i'm showing you the secret to peace there are men and women who have found peace you see them rejoicing and they are happy because they have found a system in god that it is more beneficial for him to be glorified than for your agenda to find expression it's not about the crowd it's about his kingdom it's not about joshua selman it's about his kingdom i bring you the message that represents the epicenter of the gospel that has been misunderstood even by preachers who preach the new testament what they preach in the new testament is they say okay now there's no more works jesus has done everything enjoy that's complete nonsense it's an incomplete truth the key is he brought you to a state where you no longer are self-centered the motivation behind everything you do is now for his glory there's nothing that gives my life joy as that name be that word be glorified lord be glorified it's my statement every time when i pray all i tell him is be glorified be glorified preparing for miracle service lord i thank you i love you with all my heart your people are coming they are trusting that you will use me and lord i thank you be glorified every time i stand on this stage and i look at you believe me i have no business trying to impress anybody his glory his glory that's why i do the things that i do we just rounded up our external ministration for the year and it's been a busy year sometimes while we are traveling when we're on transit i just sit down the last meeting was last week and we had to leave I think 4 30 in the morning to catch up with our flights to lagos and while we we're going in the night i was saying what is all this why am i risking my life like this i didn't sleep i wanted to rest my head and the next thing it was time and i had to what am i looking for ministry am i so dull that i cannot write a book can't i do a webinar are there not intelligent ways to make myself omnipresent the internet has helped to make omnipresence possible I can be everywhere so what what the heck is all this traveling around and all of a sudden you just remember for his glory for your glory i will do anything just to see you to behold you as my king for your glory I will do anything just to see you, to behold you as my king. I want to be where you are. got to be where you are. I want to be where you are. Listen, let me preach to you this night some of you the load you are carrying is a demon that put it on your head that load is not from god the bible says my yoke is easy 
and my burden is light your life is surrounded by too many self-inflicted worries worries that make no sense at the foundation of those worries is your self-centeredness and your desire to solve those problems for the sake of your ego but i bring you a message here's what jesus said come on to me it is a discourse with me come on to me all ye that are heavy laden and are weary he says and i will give you rest i will give you rest the worry in your life is killing you sister the worry in your life is killing you there are some of us who are older than our age they look at you and they say how old are you let me guess uh, 37 you say me i'm just 25 what what made that worry added an age that was not given by god you see people worry all the time they get up in the morning they are worried ah the bible says, which of you by worry can add one cubit this is scripture you know honestly speaking sometimes when 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 i drive around the road or when i stand i start laughing in the car i'm just laughing because i'm saying my god what made people like this how did people suddenly become like this you see a man quarreling somebody a conductor insisting that that five naira must be given and the person is refusing and then you stand somewhere someone is stealing they are catching him someone is cheating somebody in the market a lady is frowning her way to the market and you look at this and say my god who programmed us like this because when you die all these things end right now as i'm speaking an arm robber is trying to fly a fence he may die this night but he's thinking they are already calculating when you do this we will steal this one then we'll run out he may die this night that's his mindset when jesus says i will give you rest believe it there is a pastor right now who is not sleeping he's under pressure the messages i'm preaching are they new or are they still does it look like i'm growing pressure how can we multiply the members i already prophesied that we're going to have three times and now it's almost december we need like one thousand more people how can we do that your ego on the line forcing you to wake your leaders in the night in the name of leaders meeting but it's simply your ego on the line please rest prophesy to someone close to you say rest say it rest i bring you a system in the kingdom where men can hand over these self-inflicted problems look at this come sir if this guy is an arm robber watch this this is an example if he's an arm robber and you catch him stealing now i'm the policeman and i'm about, about to shoot him are we together the moment i shoot this guy and he falls to the ground is that an arm robber again that's not an arm robber are you seeing that's an innocent body that was controlled by nonsense for many years and understanding made that body jump a fence by force something else can come into that body and that body suddenly becomes a pastor it was never the body the body did not jump on the fence by itself a self-centered nature of wanting to be like the young guys too we are like the young guys the ones that have you see you see there's this craze among young people the ones who have made it let me see the designer you are wearing the watch how much hundred and how many thousand there is are you wearing versace or this and the other person said kai you see i'm tired of all this tailor tailor thing this guy that is sewing something suit is bending around i need to start dressing well and we put ourselves under pressure that's what some of you are doing now you promise yourself to wear a particular weave before Christmas. It's unnecessary. That money can pay your rent, your small house that you are, you are paying. Unnecessary things. Listen, please, I want you to write this down. The only thing that is worth your blood, the only thing that is worth your blood, listen to me, is your relationship with Jesus and if you are married, your marriage write it down these are the only two things in this life that is worth your blood worth you waking up to not sleep the only thing that is worth your blood is your relationship with jesus and if you are married your marriage two things
they are the only things that the bible places so much priority onto even unto death thank you are we together i think it was last week or the week before last i sang a song i will sing it again When it's all been said and done All my treasures will mean nothing Only what I've done for love's reward Will stand the test of time Lord, your mercy is so great that you look beyond our weakness and find pure as gold in married clay turning sinners into saints and i will always sing your praise here on earth and ever after for you've shown me heaven's my true home when it's all been said and done you're my life when life brothers learn this don't be foolish husbands 10 years from now don't join the confusion of men who are punishing their wives and their children my ego my this all this nonsense that wrinkles men to death high blood pressure killing men they die of high blood pressure and what brought the high blood pressure is never solved oh i would never be that foolish never be that foolish this is what i'll do with my life this is the part of the song that I really like. We we'll raise your banner high. We we'll shine your light so bright. We we'll sing in honor of you. That's the reason why we are alive. Lord, we will raise your banner high. We'll shine your light so bright. We'll sing in honor of you. Prophesy one minute to yourself and say, I reject worry. Say it. I reject it. No. You came with culture, but I reject you. I reject self centeredness. I hand over the management of my life to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Whatever God cannot do, cannot be done, no. Whatever God cannot do, let no man fool you that it can be done. Listen, listen, come. If God does not give you a wife, if you like wear suit, speak english you can choose nonsense for yourself the depression you are having going online wanting to like every lady capturing people's pictures on your phone is nonsense that self-centeredness on rampage hand over that rubbish to god and rest if god does not give you a husband cat walk jump pray in tongues cook you will never marry until he gives it to you a man can have nothing except it is given unto you if god does not open access to wealth do business buy sell sell cement sell sand do anything i assure you you will never have this thing in the kingdom is not an achievement it's a trust he said my son give me your heart god does not anoint you try to start a ministry you will be shocked that you are preaching well yet nobody will come because it has not been given everything in the kingdom is given until it is released from heaven you will never have it the worry of men 
is killing them listen listen because of the healing ministry i study a lot about health do you know i have found out i'm not a doctor we have doctors here but most of the disease what we call it disease people put themselves in an atmosphere that destroys them i tell you i have come to the conclusion that aside from demonic influences all sicknesses all sicknesses are psychologically related depression when will you come and build a house in the village and you are under pressure you have one million naira that you would have used to plan your life but somebody has stimulated your egocentric nature and you go to the village you start building and die there have you ever gone to uk no 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 and you are putting yourself under pressure selling your car selling your wife selling your children to get the tp to go to uk and live like a fool at the borders go and see nigerians abroad see them under bridges when a student is here in nigeria and he's working they tell him no concentrate but when he goes abroad he can be scrubbing toilet and be schooling they say it's all right our carnal nature producing this nonsense we see in society let it change tonight please it's like a it's like something spinning men the moment you are born you enter into it it starts spinning you till death you can come out of it and you will be amazed at how people have been killing themselves by themselves i live a very happy life i'm telling you i live a very happy life when people look at me and say apostle the burden of the ministry i say me burden of the ministry you are joking i can be tired though physically speaking but maybe fatigued like frustration from ministry never anybody who tells you i'm ever frustrated in my life go and tell that person is a liar from the pit of hell i am a very very happy person whatever i don't have i keep it when koinonia started here miracle service i, I will wear a suit that can buy a bike and climb the bike are we together i will climb the bike and it will come and there will be overflow of people here i will drop from the bike and people are watching ah this apostle on a bike i mean i don't have to sit down and tell myself i know how many times a jimmy can be a witness i went to go and buy a car and god said leave this place there was a time i finished the arrangement can you imagine that embarrassment standing you are happy you are smiling about to call your people and saying i'm making it and god said what are you doing here Your ego will not allow you to leave. You say, no way. God, collect it, I will buy. And you buy it and it never gives you joy. When you insist on taking what God did not give you, he will take back something he gave you. Write it down. When you insist on taking what God did not give you, believe me, he will take back something he gave you. We raise your banner high. We shine your light so bright. We sing in honor of you. Lord, I will raise your banner high. I shine your light so bright. I sing in honor of you. You know, you know, my people have learned a lot of things working with me because they travel. Do you know there are times we've gotten to the airport, we just get to the airport and because we arrived late, we've missed our flight. They have, they have learned this, that I don't worry. If someone calls me now and says, Apostle, your house is on fire, your car is on fire, everything is on fire, your bank is on fire, I will tell them, let me finish Koinonia. When I finish, I look at it, I say, okay, so what bond? There's nothing we can recover. Glory be to God. I give you praise. You know what I'm going to do? I'll go back and I'll sleep. To wake up and say, ah, my life. <laughs> no, I've grown up. You know what we say? I'll say, okay, in house, sir. It'll never happen. Never happen. I'm giving you the secret of rest. Some of you are surprised. Is it really true? Because it is never a reality you have come to conceive in your mind. You are already you have acclimatized yourself to worry. You never believe that there can be such a reality. It is your ego, self-centeredness. Self-centeredness. 
please please hear me hand over your life to god I, i'm not i don't mean born again you keep hearing me say this i handing your life to god is not reciting salvation prayer no coming to a point where you relinquish ownership lord it belongs to you nevertheless not my will but thy will be done nevertheless not my plans but your plan be done nevertheless not my desires but your desires i know the bible says he will give us the desires of our hearts but brothers and sisters he will only give you the desire that is consistent with his will so you don't coin a desire by yourself and start imposing god using scriptures like a charm to turn his hand no the desire must be consistent with his will lord do whatever you want to do with my life it's yours it truly is yours i've told him this many times koinonia belongs to him you can call me anything you want to call me it's never my ministry i don't have the power to run a ministry it belongs to him that's why he spreads it the way he wants and does with it things that are even more than my frame of wisdom i imagine how depressed i would have been if i were doing ministry by myself and my strength i live a very happy life most times when we travel for meetings they don't even know who apostle is as soon as we drop most times i'm in my polo with my earphones listening to something and they walk to mike and say good afternoon sir and then they turn to victor good afternoon and then they just see me and i can see the shock this is the thing we have been waiting for for hours at the airport there is this treasure in earthen vessels it gives me joy listen it gives me joy when i decrease because the more i decrease my problems decrease the more i decrease my worry decreases whoever is the landlord is the one who renovates the house i i, I mean let him let him handle everything he's not in me as a tenant he's in me as a landlord I give you the secret of peace quit the life of self-centeredness finances all of this I, i'm trying to do this keep your ego on the line if you ever seek prosperity let it be because you desire for his kingdom to come and mean it seriously and show it by how your current resources are advancing his kingdom if your 10 naira does not advance his kingdom your 1 billion will not advance his kingdom one gentleman came and met me and he said that um that he wanted to be to, me to pray for him he's a kingdom financier i said really he said by god's grace he wants to be giving maybe like 100 100 million to like 10 different ministries every month i said wow that's great and this guy came to my place he didn't even buy orange of 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 50 naira i i, I told him i said you will not be a kingdom financier as you can see that, that i am not looking for this but if you don't have the sense i am god's servant you believe i'm god's servant and you cannot buy orange of 50 naira right i see the shoe you are wearing i see everything you are wearing you come and you are twisting your tongue for hours telling me you want to sow 100 million your heart is not giving there's no giver in your heart so you are not going to give you are only a liar and the money will kill you if you even get it sir, it's not even, you will not get it at best you will just be comfortable god is not a fool you can choose your way and die with it but his way do you know as i'm preaching to you now when we begin to pray some of you will find out that certain sicknesses will just leave you because the foundation of you've taken panadol you've taken injection it has not left because the spirit that sponsors that thing is sitting on a mindset that is comfortable you hand over your life to god that's all absolutely that's all every time people ask you things you don't know the answer just tell them god be glorified god be praised ha -ha. when will you buy a car now you are getting too old for my liking we give god the praise god is going to step in just diplomatically laugh and leave them your mother calls you and say don't come back home if there's no if, if there's nobody you are going to introduce ha -ha my child are you cursed what is wrong i am your mother oh yeah i bless you go and bring a husband mommy the lord be glorified simple you enter your room and dance it away and dance it and let satan see you rejoicing 
Huh? You are you are a graduate. You are you are masters. You even have PhD. No job. What is wrong with you? This other guy is a smoker and he's working in NMPC. You claim to love God, huh? and even I mean you cannot even get a job anywhere. Jesus, be praised, be glorified. Not in the name of Jesus. I will go about what kind of I'm tired of unbelievers mocking me. Let them mock. If you take the shame, what are you doing with the glory? He cannot take the glory and give you the shame. Whoever takes the shame should also take the glory. Rise up on your feet. Take over. Take over. I have come to the end of myself. Take over. Take over. I have touched the end of myself hallelujah hallelujah i have come to the end of myself hallelujah hallelujah i have come to sing it from the depth of your heart hey, hey, take over take over i have come to the end of myself Take over, take over, I have come to the end of myself, hallelujah, hallelujah, I have come to the end of myself, hallelujah, hallelujah, I have come to the end of myself. Prayer point number one, Lord, Take away this load from my life. Lift your voice and begin to pray. Take it away. This unnecessary pressure to prove a point. This unnecessary pressure is making me greedy. Is making me covetous. Take it away from my life. I pray Lord take this load it's depressing me I can't sleep because of it I cry alone in the night because of it I hand over everything to you Pray, pray your way to freedom. Pray your way to liberty. Now the Lord is that spirit, and where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. hallelujah hallelujah prayer point number two listen you are going to wage warfare in the next two minutes against all the traits that your self-centeredness has produced listen some of you have bitter jealousy you love god but if you ever see something that is not in you 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 get resentful covetousness high-mindedness you crave for recognition you will claim you don't but it's written all over your life your appetite for recognition is to a fault you may not directly go to look for it but when they bring it the way you jump at it shows you desire it are we together what of lost lost your appetite for lost has driven you beyond imagination appetite for vain glory I am pastor this not brother this self-centeredness what of your desire to outshine others ladies you always want to be seen as a happening person it's a spirit you pride yourself in outshining others 
what of pastors the competitive jealousy that moves around men of God everybody trying to tear down another to show he is standing is self-centeredness what of all the religious activities done to command respect not just to glorify God prayers fasting look serious but motivated behind it is the desire for a name listen listen Nimrod Kush said go to come let us build a city whose top will reach the heavens and let us make a name for ourselves the issue was not the city the issue was the name everywhere the spirit of the antichrist manifested is sought self-recognition i like you to pray mention those attitudes mention those attributes and let them die in your life lift your voice don't be arrogant don't claim there's nothing to pray for selfishness lord deliver me pray open your mouth and pray jesus deliver me from lust deliver me from pride i have a bitter and a wicked heart deliver me from it i don't rejoice at the progress of others deliver me from it I'm so obsessed by my desires I don't care who gets hurt on the way deliver me oh God are you praying I have paid less attention to the needs of people it's always been about me my opinion my desire what I want are you praying hallelujah listen you are going to pray for supernatural compassion that listen beyond your desires you pay attention to the effect of your desires on the kingdom and on people don't want something so bad you don't care who dies listen listen don't go to people's houses and inconvenience them and not care whether they are being inconvenienced provided your desires are met you must have a sense of empathy you don't go to a house their resources are about finishing and you don't even have the spirituality to say no even when they offer you some things there are some things the answer is no yes cannot be the answer to everything are you hearing what i'm saying you must sustain the discipline it cannot be give me give me your hand is always open to collect there are times do you know do you know there are certain homes that sometimes i'm not saying this is the general reason but there are times i deliberately will not want to go do you know why especially some of our parents and loved ones i will not go because i know how much they honor me and sometimes they can be constrained financially are we together and i know that attempting to go there they will go out of their way maybe even borrow money to try to put things in place and i say no 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 or sometimes i take them unawares and i insist that they don't give anything maybe a cup of water just to bless the house but some of you i know that if you are functioning in this grace people will lock their houses when they see you because you will inconvenience people how many millionaires in many churches cannot testify because the day they just testify i paid a tithe of one million the pastor says see me after service the other office not the regular one and that man never rests text message all the time we need chairs in this church is God speaking to you let me know if he's talking all kinds of pressures the discipline to have empathy 
for people. Don't want something so bad. You enter a room. You want to cook your food. You pour water on people's bed. That's it, the room. You are self-centered. You are more concerned about your stomach. You don't care what happens to any other person. There are husbands like that. They never pray. They never do anything. The day they are going to pursue them from the office, they organize night vigil. Everybody is seated at home peacefully. The next thing, you see one man of God who just enter like a thief and start singing around. And he'll call everybody. And nobody will sleep that night. Because the man has a problem. But when somebody is about to die, and they say, ah, my husband, let's pray. They say, no, 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 no. That's their business. Our society is full of self-centeredness. That's why many husbands never enjoy their homes. They claim they have experience in marriage, but their self-centeredness destroys them. Many wives, same thing. Many children, same thing. Self-centeredness fools the society. I'd like you to pray and say, Lord, give me compassion to study the effect of my passion on others. To make sure that I not only receive results, but that I don't damage the destinies of people in a bid to get my desires. Lift your voice and pray. Empathy of the feeling of others. The Bible says, for we do not have a high priest who has not been touched with the feelings of our infirmity. Hallelujah. Listen, there are some of you after this meeting, you are supposed to send text messages to certain people and tell them, I'm so sorry. I never realized that my desire has been hurting you so bad. There are people you are supposed to send them text messages. Are we together? Yeah. So bad. They make their bed. You bring your friends and scatter their bed. And you stand up and walk away. You are so conscious about your desire. You don't care about the feeling of anybody. To hell with anything. There are others, your relationship. Too many people have suffered because of your own relationship. You carry your wife or your husband to be to a house, loot their food, eat everything. I mean, come on. There are others, it's their job. Don't let anything you have intentionally cause trouble and break people down. It's not worth it. When the election, Nigeria's election, and the president now won, Jonathan did something, I'm not a politician, but he did something that touched my heart. There were so many prophecies that had come that he will win from men of God who had had credible track records. And the moment that happened, he would have put his ego on the line and shed the blood of millions of Nigerians. But he said, no, his aspiration is not worth the blood of Nigerians. And he declined. That for me, is no matter what went wrong in his government that i seen on the cake has made him a man of honor and an international elder statesman the model of his concession is what is being used in many african nations right now leaders who otherwise would not concede and receive def defeat his life has become a template that's what happened when you create a sense of empathy don't say i want the shoe so bad if i must steal i will steal I want the phone so bad if I must remove the phone of the seam of my roommate to just ask, please, grow up. Don't put people in trouble because of your desires. It's too selfish. One more time, you are going to pray and say, Lord, help me. I'm tired of self-centeredness. Now my eyes have been opened and I'm seeing how much because of my life, so many people's destinies are almost being destroyed. My gossiping around to explain myself has caused pain to all, too many people. From today, I receive grace to shut my mouth. My blood mail has destroyed too many people. I have joined the hands of the heads of good friends. 
I have caused trouble for too many people. It's not worth it. I'm a child of God. Deuteronomy, when you read, I think chapter 28 or so, it shall come to pass, it says, if thou shalt diligently hearken to these things, to do and observe all that I command you this day, that you shall be exalted above all nations, and the blessing shall come upon you and overtake you, is tied to your obedience. The Bible says, having the readiness to judge every disobedience when your obedience is perfected, when it is complete. Disobedience authorizes the devil to buffet our lives. Don't let anybody lie to you that when you disobey God, nothing happens. No. It's not about God doing it. It's about the laws in the spirit. They will not change. They didn't start with the Old Testament. Those laws predate our dispensation. Are we together now? So tonight... I want you to look at your life very carefully especially for those of us who have come have you not seen traces of the influence of darkness in one area or the other that does not mean you are not born again that does not mean you are not serious with God but it's time tonight on behalf of you and your family members to rise up and say no way I come by the blood I come to challenge these things there are many of us who have never received a testimony of any good thing that anybody has done in your life. Somebody buys a recharge card to give you, it disappears physically. That's, that's the extent to which this thing is working against you. Have you seen people like that? A guy tells a lady, I love you, car will jam him two hours later. Just for trying to verbalize that I'm considering marrying you. Car jams him. His friend now comes and says, Tor, since my friend has come, me too, I love you. Something happens. Let me tell you the meaning of that. It puts a stigma on you and your family. Are you getting me now? And they say, these people, there is death. Have you not seen lands that people bought land to build house? Why do you think we dedicate properties? Why do you think we pour oil on land? I know a man who bought a property and went there to stroll in the night and receive the slap in the, in, the, in the land. True, true story. Because the spirit there does not care whether you paid for it. Gave him a slap. When, listen, when I was in secondary school, we were in a temporal site before they moved us to the, perm the permanent site. That temporal site used to be a hospital. Are you getting the point? where the place that was like the mortuary was part of the place that was converted to our kitchen i tell you many students had encounters with strange beings you are entering to ease yourself and you will just hear sounds sounds that can give you a headache for a long time i remember our school getting ultimate power so that we we'll watch as their own strategy to deliver us from this this nonsense Many students were initiated into occultism because of that. But tonight, we come in the name of the Lord, the captain of the army. That this situation in your life must end. I sat back there fighting tears when all the people were sharing their testimonies. A testimony is simply what happens when the Holy Spirit becomes the only influence in a man's life. Any other spirit must create problems. Tonight, daddy, mommy, sisters and brothers, there is need to deal with certain things in our lives. I saw poverty in my family as if we offended God. Coming from a pastor's family didn't change my family background. Your name can be Solomon. You will remain poor until what needs to be addressed be addressed.
That's why I told you tonight will be a night of massive deliverance. Listen, as we begin to pray, many of you who are sick will all of a sudden turn and find out that the sickness has gone. Really, when you understand this, you will know what a miracle is. A miracle is what happens when the spirit that is causing that ailment departs. This is what Jesus did to the woman who was bound. He looked at her in the spirit and he saw that a spirit had tied her for 18 years. And he said, woman, thou art loose. Loose? He didn't say thou art healed. He said thou art loose. The moment the spirit left, he laid hands on her and straightened the physical body. And there she went. Remember that madman at Gadarin? That was an evangelist in a cave. Tearing himself into pieces. The moment the spirits heard that Jesus was coming, they were waiting for him at the other side. Hallelujah. Mighty on your throne. Mighty on your throne. I'll never forget one time I was praying. Praying seriously, I was in the spirit. And I had a vision. I saw that there is a tree that is close to and where I stay and I didn't see that tree again I just saw a great beast like like a like a being the tail was a snake the eyes were big like human head imagine this head now like an eye two of them one here one here and the spirit was looking at me with fierce anger and all he told me is so you think you can bring God's people into prosperity and then it left that was it mighty on your throne mighty on your throne that's the reason why every time satan wants to destroy you the devil will now cause you to disrespect that person so your mother may be an anointed woman and you will fight and tear and say over my dead body for you to pray with me and satan will say amen let's go and then the oppression starts because your pride and your arrogance will not allow you to go to the person and say help me tonight we are going to cry to the king of kings i don't know if you came for this miracle service especially for those who are family people here you should never go back the same you see the results of people 4.8 5 points they have always had that ability even when they were getting one point it's a spirit that makes that happen don't let anyone fool you you are not so daft human beings were created intelligent when you enter an exam hall and you write nonsense and come out with zero and smile and say it's just because I didn't read well. Is that really true? How many of you watch film twice to explain it? You sit down and watch a three hour film once and you can come out and recite that film completely with the hair of the actor's wife. And that was, you didn't read for it. Yet you spend six months or five months reading for one course. And then at the end of it, you come and fail it and get nonsense. And you keep convincing yourself. It's just that I didn't get it. It is the reason why you can read a novel of 1,000 pages. But a lifetime, you can't read half of the Bible. Because there is a spirit stopping you. If this was a novel, some of us would say, take this. I will bring it for you next week friday and you will exhaust it but from the day you were born the day you were born till today you have not read up to one third of the bible one time you cried and prayed and fasted and started and three days later remember when you carried your devotional and did balance brought forward you started reading from two weeks back as a sign of repentance after you read it you now threw it away because you cannot help yourself in the flesh it takes the anointing of the spirit that's why he sends carpenters that's why he puts miracle services like this so that you can come under the influence of god's power how about genotype issues ss you get up and find out you are ss or as do you know the bible never mentions the issue of ss or as are you aware of that that thing was a technology that was fabricated by satan to stop people from getting married you see a beautiful lady who has a prophet in her womb to come and then one spirit just brings one one demonic report called ss and they say sorry we can't join you because you are going to kill your children for that devil is a liar in this place tonight i'm 
challenging you because when we rise we are going to pray the miracles will start as we pray you've got to be angry with yourself and say no enough is enough enough is enough we are come to mount zion where there is an innumerable company of angels where there is the blood of sprinkling the blood of sprinkling that speaketh better things than any covenant that speaketh better things than any ordinance the good news is that jesus has paid the price our job is to enforce that victory are you getting my point we enforce that victory by engaging the mysteries of the kingdom that bring for liberty we are going to pray that that power that has tied our destinies down it must let us go same power that conquered the grave lives in me lives in me your love that rescued the earth lives in me lives in me same power that conquered the grave lives in me lives in me yeah. your love that rescued the earth lives in me lives in me sing it two more times with faith in your heart same power that conquered the grave lives in me lives in me your love that rescued the earth lives in me lives in me jump up on your feet as we sing it one more time same power that conquered the grave lives in me lives in me your love lives in me lives in me one more time with faith in your spirit say power that conquered the grave lives in me lives in me your love that rescued the earth lives in me lives in me listen Deliverance, therefore, is a separation. It's the spiritual process that experientially brings the separation between you and the forces and influences. The spirits that attempt to influence your life. The legal separation. Brothers and sisters, when that happens to you, then you will see gates open by themselves when that happens to you you will see realms of favor all these things people pray on you must challenge those spirits you must challenge those spirits on behalf of yourself and your family and god is ready for us tonight i tell you god is ready for us tonight lift your voice in one minute and bless him for this word the body without a spirit is dead the body without a spirit is dead now i realize that there is a spiritual component to the challenges in my life lift your voice and thank you for this revelation lord i now realize that there is a spirit component to the failure in my family there is a spirit component to the retrogression in my life there is a spirit component to my lack of admission there is a spirit component to my lack of marriage there is a spirit component to the poverty in my family are you praying tonight let a dissatisfaction rise from you. 
Abrata de bacate prate que leva do coso prate bela de bos. Oh, come on, tonight is your night of liberty. Same power that conquered the grave lives in me. Lives in me. Your love that rescued the earth lives in me. Lives in me. Just the voices. Sing it from your heart. Same power that conquered the grave lives in me lives in me the power that can challenge any altar the power that can challenge any force of witchcraft any generational cause one more time sing it that conquered the grave lives in me lives in me Lives in me, lives in me. Same power, power that conquered the grave. Lives in me, lives in me. Your love, your love, say your love. Hallelujah. Lift up your voice right now and mention everything you know that is a tragic event in your life and challenge it. Say it must stop tonight. Lift your voice. Oh, come on, Koinonia, you should be praying. Mandalatata Challenge the spirit. Challenge the spirit. Behind failures, challenge the spirit. Behind marital delays, challenge the spirit. Challenge the spirit of death from your family. Challenge the spirit of death. Challenge the spirit. Challenge the spirit. He must let you go tonight. He must let you go tonight. Those outside, I hope you are praying. This is your destiny tonight. The spirit, the body without a spirit is dead. Hallelujah. 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 Look up, please. Your failure without the spirit that sponsors it is dead. Barrenness without the spirit that sponsors it is dead. Are you getting what I'm saying? The key to liberty is to evict the spirit that initiates that thing. For a body without a spirit is dead. Any cause without a spirit backing it is dead. It's null and voice. Any pronouncement, any enchantment without a spirit is dead. Therefore, I want you to lift your voice. And I want you to declare forget about the problems lift your voice and speak as a believer that you are to every spirit address it behold i give you power over snakes scorpions pray 
Pretese parato bari barata bajosa. Reke paka pata. Reke teke baraga na baka bara bara. Reke teke 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 teke. Si para si para si para si para. Reke teke baraga na baka bara bara. Reke teke teke teke. Oh yes, he must lead you tonight. Ba se teliata. Reke bara baka na baka bara. Brata bara baka gode gede gede bara. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen. Listen. There are spirits that will never allow you to walk in the anointing. They will never let your eyes open to see visions. And even when it opens, they will, they will bring you into error. So that everything you see misleads you into trouble. I'd like you to lift your voice again. Just do what I'm asking you to do. From the realm of the heavens, challenge powers, challenge forces over your finances. Oh, it must change, it must change, it must change tonight. Hallelujah. Lift your hands. My goodness. It's a strong anointing in this place. Oh, it must let you go tonight. Who says that breakthrough will not come? Who says that marriage will not come? Who says that cancer cannot die? Who says that HIV cannot live? Maka kapata. Lift your hands to the heavens. Embriakata. Lateka tata. Manto porotoskia. Seketetete. Embrokotoska riadaba. Lift your hands. My goodness. All I see in this room and outside is fire. That's all I see. Fire. You will see deliverance tonight like you have never seen. This one is the one that will bring your miracle listen as this prayer goes on miracles will start immediately many of you will start getting reports from your body many of you will be open to visions right now lift your hands hallelujah my goodness, there is such a heavy unction on me. It's for deliverance tonight. It must give way for you to move forward. At the count of three, hear me. Listen, I want you to shout Jesus at the top of your voice. At the top of your voice is a prophetic instruction. As you shout it, fire. Some of you visions, your eyes will be open in the spirit. You will see covens catching fire. Matalabata. Father, you told me tonight is a night of deliverance. There are families under bondage. There are businesses under bondage. Enough is enough. Let your fire bring deliverance. Are you ready now? At the count of three, may heaven invade this place. One. Two, three. Second, second, second. I command covens. I command altars. 
I command spirits. Kaporotose. Bring them out. Fire. 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 Bring deliverance tonight. Shaka ba 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 ba. Emrotos tete. Shaka tete 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 tete. Reke tete 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 tete. Hallelujah. 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 The Holy Ghost is showing me a vision. We are going to shout it again. Please don't do it here. I see many people vomiting poison, physical poison. As you shout physically, it will come out. Lift your voice. Bata bata. Shaka ta ta ta. Mare tendetepa. Father, anything that has been planted in the body of anyone right now, as you shout, Jesus, we have victory. One, two, three. Shaka ta 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 ta. Shaka ta 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 ta. Shaka ta ta ta. E protos mokotos lekotos pronto tokote e riakata. He must let you go. He must let you go. You are coming out of their lives. You are coming out of their lives. You are coming out of their lives. My goodness fire is burning in this place fire is burning in this place fire is burning in this place the devil must let you go the devil must let you go the devil must let you go the Lord is giving me a word right now there are ladies here there is a spirit that comes to you in the night to oppress you to sleep with you right now lord where are they let that fire let that fire bring deliverance right now right now right now right now every spirit husband every manifestation every spirit wife every devil that has leads to you it leaves you now now right now He must leave you now. Hallelujah. The Lord is showing me a lady. You see physical snakes. Where is that lady? Physically, physically. It appears to you. Physically. The lady is right here. Please come out. I don't know who that lady is. Physical snake. It appears to you. You see it. Ala barata toko to barada ba. Shendere teke tele bosuba. Raka baroto supati na malada. Let me tell you something. After this miracle service, you will see advancement in your life in a way that will surprise you. That's when you will know that Satan is not as powerful as he looks. Hallelujah. Lift your voice and pray. Any covenant that ties me to anything of the fathers, I've been called out of every tribe, every tongue. I am a, I'm a new creation, no longer connected to ancestry. Lift your voice and pray. Every altar that connects me to my fathers, Every witchcraft that attempts to connect me. No, I'm in Christ. I'm in Christ. I'm in Christ. I'm in Christ. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We pray for the sick, but there are miracles happening right now. When I call your, your case, just check it and come out here right now. I'm seeing, I'm seeing a lady. Please check it. There's like a growth right here at the side of your breast. Check it right now. You'll find out that it's gone. Check it right now. Right now. And make your way to the front. I see someone having severe pain. Your thigh. Right under here, your thigh. There is severe pain. Severe pain. The Lord is healing that person right now. Please check yourself and make your way to the front. Right now. Check yourself. Make your way to the front. I'm seeing two ladies. You came here with heaviness. There is heaviness on your chest. It's just like something heavy. God is healing people. Can you appreciate Jesus? Hallelujah. There are miracles happening. Make your way to the front now. We'll give you room to testify. Stand here. All the people that are coming out for miracles, just stand here. Right now, there are miracles that are happening. I see someone like your nose. It's like there is an irritation in your nose. While we were praying, you felt like there was fire on it. And now it's lifted. Now it's lifted completely. It's gone right now. Right now. Right now. I'm seeing someone. Severe peptic ulcer. It hooks you. Hooks you very seriously. As we started praying, it just disappeared. Who is that? Make your way to the front right now. Right now. Right now. Right now. Right now. I see a lady you hear a voice telling you you will die not a vision a physical voice physical voice it tells you you will die a physical voice physical voice it speaks to you physically can you help me all the please if i don't call anybody's case i'm going to pray for the sick i'm calling miracles cases that have happened help me um aaron would you help me just examine these people and then we'll take a few testimonies god is giving people miracles miracles right now miracles right now miracles are happening right now i'm seeing somebody listen there is a growth you came here with the growth at the back of your neck check it now it has disappeared check it now now and make your way to the front put your hand there and check it you will find out that that growth is gone completely i'm seeing two holes two holes of a left teeth being healed right now check it you won't find the hole again two holes two holes of your teeth check it right now and make your way to the front my goodness god is doing miracles in this place There are miracles that are happening. Miracles that are happening. I saw this same case in Kaduna this morning. Now, I'm seeing four people. Four people. There is one guy and three ladies. You have pile. Pile. For one of the ladies, when you go to ease yourself, it's as if you are giving birth. Blood comes out. Go and check yourself now. you find out that that pile is gone. Gone back to the devil. Go and check it, please please we are not playing games don't sit back confirm your miracle and seal it i know there is a guy i saw a guy pile severe pile hallelujah the lord is showing me a lady tears just start coming out of your eyes without any you are not crying but it just starts coming out it's very embarrassing it starts coming out right now the lord is healing you wherever you are confirm it and make your way to the front right now confirm it and make your, your way to the front right now right now confirm it and make your way to the front we'll give all of them room to testify god is healing people right now i'm seeing someone with this finger look at me this finger this very finger that's what the lord is showing me there is a miracle happening on that finger this very one i don't know if it broke or something happened to it but there is a miracle happening to that finger right now right now i'm hearing a name gabriel 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 who is gabriel gabriel 
Gabriel. The Lord is bringing a, a miracle for Gabriel. Gabriel. I've been fighting this name, but let me bring it out. I'm hearing a name, Asabe. I don't know if it's a woman or somebody in a family. Asabe. Asabe, I'm hearing that name. Who is Asabe? Please confirm. Make sure you confirm it. Let's not. Huh? You are Asabe? Uh, but I'm seeing another person again. No. Eh? This, you are Asabe. Please stand here. Miracles everywhere. Come, tell us. Very quickly, come, come. Please help us. Give Aaron. Let's, let's coordinate them. Okay, come, sir. Let's just listen to this. Give them the mic, Lawrence. Just testify. Tell us, look at the crowd, straight to the point. What happened to you? What is the miracle? Praise the Lord. I am the girl who the man of God prophesied. I have an irritation in my nose since 2012. 2012. Yes. And now what happened? Every day, once I put my hand, I, I always notice blood coming out. But now, I felt something drop out of my nose. That devil leaves you forever. In the name of Jesus Christ. Free. Give Jesus praise. God is doing miracles here. All kinds of miracles are happening in this place. Please, the next people, let's have them come very quickly. Just turn and let's testify. Don't look at me. Look at the crowd. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I, I have this bonus While we are confession. talking, there is a lady I have who will come strongly me. under the anointing outside. Please pick that lady and bring her. Hallelujah. As we are talking, the power of God is, in fact, two ladies. Two ladies outside, mightily by the anointing. Please pick them and bring them. Yes, ma'am. Hallelujah. On my left thigh, I have this burning sensation. I don't even know what cause, but I know that once it starts, it burns me as if I'm sitting on fire. Okay. But now it's gone. And since last hearing this voice saying I will die, even when I was coming last week, I had this fear that I was going to... But right now, it's gone. completely gone. Give Jesus praise. God bless you. Yes, please. Check yourself. If you see a miracle, you can come out. We are going to pray for the sick, but we want to take testimonies. We'll give you an opportunity to tell us what God is doing. Mama, please stand up. Please don't let Mama sit down for God's sake. Give her a chair. Mama should not be kneeling down. Praise the yes, Lord. please. Sometimes I normally feel pains in my chest. Sometimes I normally feel pains in my chest, but now I feel very... Breathe in and out. Breathe in and out. Any pain? Any pain? Is there any pain? Is there any pain? Give Jesus praise. Yes, please. Praise God. While he was preaching, I was having peptic ulcer. So peptic ulcer. Out, but while we started praying, it left me. And There's I'm one more outside. Go and carry her. Jesus. It left me immediately. Now I'm not feeling it again. No pain again. Give Jesus praise. Yes, ma'am. Praise the, praise the Lord. I used to have this heavy pain on my chest since 2002. But, um... When I went to see the doctor, they said it was pneumonia. It's, sometimes I can't breathe. Pneumonia. The pastor said that we should shout Jesus. I can't breathe. I can't shout too much. But the moment I shout Jesus, I fell on the floor. Everything just left you. No pain again. Praise the Lord. Let me pray for you. It never returns to you. In the name of Jesus. I'm seeing someone with an eye problem. I don't know what the eye problem is, but it's living right now. Please confirm yourself. Eye problem. Check it. Check it. We are not playing games, please. Check it. Check it. Eye problems. I'm seeing a miracle happening right now. Eye problem. Confirm it and come out right now. I'm seeing this at least 10 people with this case. At least 10, like the lower abdominal region right here. You've been having se severe pain. It's like something pulls you there. Check it right now. You'll find out that you receive a miracle. At least 10 people. Please make your way to the front at least 10 people check it right now god is doing a miracle don't sit back inside and outside lower abdominal region lower abdominal region that miracle is happening right now right now right now at least 10 people 10 people with that pain as soon as you check it make your way to the front celebrate jesus god is healing them they are coming they are coming all of you you can come and stand here the moment you receive a miracle please stand here they'll confirm you at least 10 ladies right at this lower abdominal region hallelujah i'm seeing a gentleman 
you came here with a throat condition in fact um let me just describe to you they are telling you they want to take you somewhere to cut the throat it's like there is an elongation some i'm seeing them saying they want to use is it knife or something and cut something that uh, an elongation who is that person the lord is healing you right now right now you can't swallow things you always feel like it's like bone but it's like there is something on your throat almost perpetually right now check it check it check it completely the power of god is coming upon you there is a lady god is healing your mother but the power of god will come upon you as a witness to that lord where is that lady right now where is that lady identify her oh god by the power of god right now right now right now please bring the lady out god is healing her mother right at home and god is using what is happening as as a point of contact as a point of contact i'm still seeing breast lump disappearing like a lump i'm seeing one on the left left side please check it check it when you receive a miracle testimony is one way to seal it and keep it the lord is showing me three ladies your hair falls every time you go to comb your hair you literally comb your hair and bring out a copious amount of your hair that is removing this thing is a serious thing you have used medication and it has not stopped a miracle is coming to those people right now a miracle is coming to those people yes let's take the testimony quickly please loud and straight to the point the Lord. help I us sound please can you help us with this mic i used to have this pen down my stomach here but now i'm, I'm not feeling completely okay. gone yes are you sure yes. how long has it been Thank come you. on koinonia let's not get too used to miracles in this place <laughs> hallelujah it never returns to you in the name of jesus christ the next person please my goodness look at what god is doing god is giving people miracles go ahead my name is like i'm pregnant it's to come like pain as in i'm pregnant and i've been complaining that for months but today when the prayer was going on i felt relieved and my stomach in fact open. as she was talking hold on the lord opened my eyes there is a lady your stomach is already swelling this is almost is even beginning to embarrass you it's not just like a stomach protruding you are feeling it very hard and stiff um, it's, you are afraid because it's looking like it's a situation of a fibroid please check it right now God is giving you a miracle God is giving you a miracle God bless you, bless you quickly when they say we should shout praise the Lord, so I now shout the stomach used to pay me even before I come to Zaria but I can't feel it again Completely gone. Yes. give Jesus praise it never returns again, yes please praise the Lord um Recently, I started having this eye pain when I'm walking, doing other things. One of the eye get blank and I don't see again. But now, and after the prayers, I feel one sharp pain and I used to have this abdominal pain almost all the time, but it just left me immediately. Give Jesus praise. It never returns to you again in the name of Jesus. Glory be to Jesus Christ. This abdominal pain starts two days ago. So, I came here and when I was praying, I just received total deliverance. And Complete deliverance. Please help them so that they don't fall on, on. Praise the Lord. The abdominal pain normally comes and goes. And when I was outside, I was still feeling my stomach hooking such that I could not stand well. I was bending. And then when the man of God spoke, I got up and stretched and to the glory Completely of the Lord. Completely no pain again. Come on, give Jesus praise. Give Jesus praise. Praise the Lord. Mine is more of um, creativity ideas that God is to give me every day when I'm in my quiet time. And it's, it happens that every time I try to push further, I realize that there are a lot of setbacks, distractions, and uh, confusions that comes my way. And right now, but what has right happened? now, when at the mention of the name Jesus, I felt my body on fire. I can't really understand what was going on. On fire, a restoration yes. of that creativity yes, co sir. comes to you yes, in the sir. name of the Lord Jesus amen. Christ. Amen and amen. God bless you. Praise the Lord. 
I came here with a severe eye eating and a shout of Jesus. Everything just wiped out. Completely. Believe me, that name works. <laughs> yes, sir. Praise the Lord. I have a medical report from Shika concerning pain in the pain. joint. You went to the hospital. Yeah. What did they say is wrong with you? They, did, they couldn't see anything. They couldn't see anything. Yeah. Okay. And when you were praying, you prophesied that there is a uh, ten people here that that God is working on yes. their system. And, and now what has happened to you? The pain is gone. The pain is completely Even gone. Give medical, Jesus praise. Even the medical report is in my room. The medical report is in your room. Yeah. You go and check yourself and you find out. All of you that were under the anointing, when you get up, don't just go back to your seat. Check. You will find out that all kinds of things have happened. You are not just falling for nothing. Praise the Lord. Praise the Praise the Lord. I'm trusting God for a new set of dentition. My teeth are just... Go ahead. <laughs> the power of God is on her. Oh, Father, complete what you have started in the name of Jesus. I stretch my hands towards you in the name of Jesus. Because your faith can receive it, let it have it in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. God bless you. Next person, please. Praise the Lord. After we take this trip, people, and, um, it's okay. Um, there's okay. this pain that I usually used to have by, um, from under my armpit to the left side of my breast. Okay. So when um, you mentioned the keys, I was not too sure if I was the one. But later you specify by saying the, your left side of your breast. I noticed like the swelling up and sometimes I very I feel like very, a swelling there. Yeah. yeah and I now feel, have you checked it? Yes. I, Is there I, anything I there? Okay Completely gone. Come on, give Jesus praise. It never returns again in the name of Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord. I want to thank God for the spirit of fear, as in I do get scared a lot, but I now I'm free in the name the of The spirit of fear. Come. It never returns to you again by the power of the Holy Ghost. You are free from the spirit of fear in Jesus' name. Yes, please. Praise the Lord. I want, to, I want to thank God for healing me from the lower abdomen. I used to have this pain right from child. When, when, I, was, when I was young, I used to have this pain. But when you were praying and you asked us to shout Jesus, I, I feel relieved. I just Completely. Want to thank God. Yes. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. God bless you, my dear. Praise God. Praise the name of the Lord. I don't know. Sometimes second of August, this very month, this is my middle finger. Help her. Fire is landing on people. I started having pain around this region, affecting this finger mostly. I can barely use it, but since he prayed during the miracle session, I got healed. I announced, I saw I've been that shaking, baby, I've a been finger. shaking it. I've been shaking it and I'm No pain having, now. Come on, no give pain. Jesus praise, everybody. Praise. Where are the two ladies, Asabe, that I called? I called some two ladies, Asabe. The Lord is changing the story of your family. Listen, Mama is Asabe. Huh? Please, you should not stress Mama. If she's, if she's out because she's sick, Mama Kizona Zamiki Adwa, please, you should not stress this old woman. If she should, even when she's coming out, carry her with the chair and just keep her here. We'll pray for her please the lord is is wiping the tears in your family you believe that when a word comes like this, it comes to give you liberty hold my hands father in the name of jesus i end this oppression in this family right now it goes forever in the name of jesus who has an elder brother who has an elder brother do you, do you have an elder brother yes. what is he doing he's a carpenter he's a carpenter yes the person i'm i'm talking about didn't go to school though is your brother yes. where is he he's in the village he's in the village god is going to lift him what is this thing that i'm seeing them <laughs> laughing at him and they are saying it it's not his fault that he didn't go to school even you is by the grace of god that you are here it's not like maybe yes. it's that your, your people are sponsoring you and all of that is the favor of god yes but god as a sign go and tell him call him after koinonia that the Lord said is going to connect him to a rich man. He should be faithful to that man. Amen. That man will bless him. Amen. Father, let there be breakthrough in this family. In the name of Jesus. Asabe. Gabriel. Oh, your name is Gabriel. Your name too is Gabriel, sir. Who is Titi Lyon? Titi Lyon. 
I'm hearing a name, Titi Layo. Please, let's save time. Our time is gone. Um, we still have to pray for the sick. Titi Layo. I'm hearing the name, Titi Layo. Titi Layo. Who is working here, sir? You're, you're working. You're both working. Okay. I'm going to pray for you because I'm seeing the Lord bringing... The Lord is... Sir, it won't be too long. You are leaving Gusau. We spoke, at least we spoke. That one is not word of knowledge. We, we spoke about it, but it won't be too long. The Lord is lifting you to another place. Go and write it down. This will happen to you. It won't be too long. Write it down. You will come back and testify before them. It's not a disadvantage. It's something that will bless you in no small way. Because you have come with your heart open. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Father, I lay my hands, I pray. Right now that you bring your word to pass concerning his life in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I hear breakthrough for you, sir. This is what I hear. The Lord is saying I should announce breakthrough to you. Father, I hold his hands and I announce breakthrough in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. Your mother is sick. What's wrong with her? She has been bleeding for the past one year. Bleeding? You, you can see the kind of demonic thing we are talking about here. Huh? Your mother bleeding for one year non-stop. How about that? And you fell under the anointing? No, sir. You, you are just standing to agree yes, for her. Okay, no problem. We have a session for that. But since you came out, hold my hands. Hold my hands. Look at me. Do you believe God will touch your mother? Where is she? At home. Where is home? Taraba. Taraba State? Yes, sir. You are from Taraba? Yes, sir. Lord, show mama mercy right now in the name of Jesus Christ. As it touches you, it touches her. Please don't just come out at will. Ah, you are related to her. Your sister is Titilayo. Yes, sir. Where is she? She's in Kaduna. What's she doing? She's schooling at Kaduna. She's schooling. Okay, let's pray for her. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, what are you doing? You. I'm a student, sir. Where? KPSS. Eh? Knowledge is power. Secondary school. Okay, knowledge is power. Yes, sir. Your sister is where? Kaduna. Kaduna. Yes, sir. Tell her. Is she married? No, sir. Tell her marriage is coming for her. Are you hearing me? You believe it? Because she has been praying about this. Your mother, where's your mother? Your mother has been joining her to pray. Yes, your sir. mother even went to a man of God and they prayed about yes. this thing. Is yes, that true? Sir. Your mother went to a man of God to pray. Go and tell her that the Lord is saying marriage comes for her. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Our God is an awesome God he raised. Hallelujah. Now, please, this is the time to minister specially to sick people. You know the nature of our programs here. We will need a lot of time. So, if you are not sick, if you are escorting somebody, please just bring the person and go back. And once they pray for you, don't wait for another prayer. One touch is okay. Some of you, when they pray for you, you refuse. You still stand back. Please, once they pray for you, just check yourself and go back. Praise the Lord. And then... Don't keep going back and coming out and saying you are doing this and that. If you came with somebody who is sick, now is the time to bring them out while we are praying. Please arrange them. Now is Mama's time. All, this, all our mothers, they can make their way now. Our God is an awesome God. He reigns from heaven above with wings. Come on and love our God is an awesome God. Our God Please clear the way for them. Clear the way for sick people. Those under the anointing, just, just carry them and keep them gently somewhere.
hallelujah now let's save time while we are praying for the sick all of you begin to submit your prayer request please i permit you to put on your phone if you need to call your loved ones to send you prayer requests call them because what god is doing tonight is unusual call them and tell them there's fire upon this place they should submit their prayer request ushers please begin to go around those online those who are connecting with us through the internet they can also connect by faith as we trust god for miracles worship team please get set you'll be giving us powerful worship songs we'll just pray for our elderly ones let the lord touch them and then he will give us peace please and um, please um when we pray for you you clear the way you do mighty things you do glorious things stretch your hands and let's pray for our mother awesome is your name you do might, you do glory, you do glory, you are a awesome is your awesome name. May God use you to wipe the tears of your parents. Listen, let me tell you any child, hear me, I'm saying this especially to we young people, any child that makes himself an instrument of pain to your mother do you know you bring a curse upon your life when you do that whatever spirit is bringing hardship on our mother and making her children not to succeed the way it should pray for her children in the name of jesus christ Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Well done, sir. Please sit down. Who's your dad? Welcome, sir. Straight, straight to the point. His legs have swollen because it's been long I saw him. He's been, he doesn't breathe well. And at the same time, he's having a problem with Mama. None of the children look at him except him. The same problem that Mama is having, that he's grateful for. It's just a similar thing. We are eight. Oh, it's paining you, sir. We are going to pray for you right now. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, stretch your hands towards our daddy. Please participate in the service. That's why you came. Hallelujah. No, no, no. Daddy, sit down. Please sit down. Sit down. Please, let's stretch our hands. 25 years of witchcraft. This is witchcraft. This is not sickness. 25 years of wickedness and oppression. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ. Let there be deliverance, O oh God. Baba, I'm going to pray for you. Well, we are praying for you now. Jesus Christ is going to touch you. Father, let Baba return with a testimony. I lay my hands in the name of Jesus and I cancel the plague of witchcraft in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Please, after today, check him and don't cry. Don't cry, eh? Clean your tears. Clean your tears. Baba, they will watch you and they will see the improvement and you will let us know. Since it's not something we can check, you are already walking in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. I pray in the name of Jesus that the power of God will come here right now as I lay my hands upon you, I want you to believe. We all came here because we trust Jesus Christ. And there will be a miracle. Those of you who are sitting down, be connecting to the healing anointing, you are the one who will be doing this. The goal is not for one person to do this. That as you are watching, something will come upon you. Thank you, Jesus. You're a faithful God. Awesome is your name. You do my God, awesome is your name. You do mighty things. You do glorious things. You're oh God, awesome is your name. You do mighty things. You do glorious things. 
you're a faithful God, awesome is your name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Look at a very serious situation. Can you flash this, this baby? Look at, can you believe? Listen, can you believe for God's sake that this baby, as beautiful as this child is, the brain is not developing? Look at this. Who told you the brain is not developing? The doctor, and we've done CT scan. You've done CT scan. You have your evidence. They said the brain is not developing. Remember, remember our teaching. A body without a spirit. There must be a spirit that is stopping this brain. How can a baby like this? This is an apostle. This is a prophet. This is a great man. Oh, what male or female? Male. Male. Man of God in the making. And a spirit come. How would you like to have a child? That, do you know what it means for the brain not to develop? That child becomes like an imbecile forever. In the name that is above all names. We lay hands upon this child. We are not only praying that God will heal him, but God will use him. My God, I pray right now. Let the brain begin to develop. We cause the spirit that is responsible for this wickedness. Right now in the name of Jesus. from village I go a lesson I will charm from village look at this mama went for election they fired something upon her head now she's mad is she mad is she your dog now yes. you are mad no you are you are not mad in the name of Jesus say I'm not mad I'm not mad in the name of Jesus whoever organized that charm on your head it returns back to them sevenfold Amen. in the name of Jesus Christ Amen. Mama, I'm praying for you right now. Every charm, every enchantment, you came to this place tonight. It ends in the name of Jesus. You are her daughter, you are her daughter. In the name of Jesus Christ. Even as it releases your mother, it releases you. Mama, you are free in the name of Jesus Christ. What's wrong? Accident, sir. Accident. Yes, sir. This guy, for a long time, the spirit of death has been following you. Eh? come do you know why the spirit of death is disturbing you 
I'm looking at you. Don't feel embarrassed. Eh? I'm looking at you, but I'm seeing you smoking something. Eh? Tell me the truth. Don't tell lies. This is what death would have killed you. You are smoking a... Uh, uh, what do they call this thing? Eh? In their hem. You go. Yes, sir. Is that not true? Yes, sir. You are smoking. The devil wants to kill you. This is... Look at, look at this. Look at this. Can you see this? Look at this. Because this is not the first time. Every time I see this guy, I see a whirlwind on his head. You, you know that the devil is after your life. You are now adding a go to it. Jesus came that you will be saved. Are you getting me? You are ready to give your life to Jesus Christ. Genuinely. Eh? Oh, oh, you are, oh, you are still with those, your friends. Yes, sir. You are still with those, your friends. Yes, sir. We cancel those relationships right now. Mm -hmm. I'm seeing you sitting down with a group of people. Yes. They are smoking and they are giving you to smoke, but you are saying you have repented yes, and they are even laughing at you. Yes, you have to leave them. We cancel that relationship in Jesus' name. The Bible, hear me. Don't say I'm not doing it, but I'm sitting down where others are doing it. The Bible says, blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the wicked, nor stands in the way of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful. He said, but his delight is in the law of the Lord. And on that law doth he meditate day and night. I curse that madness in the name of Jesus Christ. And I pray for supernatural healing. Look at me. Look at me. Lift your hands. Forget about the wound. Lift it up. Careful. You broke the hand. Oh, it can't lift. Oh, I see. No, no, no. If it can't lift, don't, don't harm yourself. I thought you broke your bone. That's why I was asking you to lift it. Father, let there be a miracle right now. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. God bless you. And anybody who smokes it go in this place. If you know you smoke it go or codeine altar. once i make the altar call just run and come and kneel down here because tonight is your night of salvation please don't play games with your destiny anything you smoke anything you drink that is outside the jurisdiction of decency the moment there's time for altar call please make your way here we love you but then the lord wants to touch you let's hurry up because our time is gone your name is out
Request right now. At the same time, an altar call is co as an altar call will be going. Those who need Jesus Christ, you are here right now, inside and outside. There are some of our brothers who are smokers and ladies. The ones that I spoke to. Now is the time. You can come before the presence of God. Don't feel bad. We're a family. And any other person, there are those who are saying, "Lord, I'm tired of the way my life is." I need a new beginning. As we pray, please come and wait here. Join this lady very quickly. Celebrate them as they come, inside and outside. Please, let's save time. Celebrate them as they come, inside and outside. God bless you. A new beginning. God is giving you a new beginning. Don't be ashamed. Don't be embarrassed. You are saying, Lord Jesus, I make up my mind to walk with you. God bless you. God bless you. Koinonia, are you celebrating them? God is saving sinners. Keep coming from outside. Please clear the way for them if they are coming. Salvation is a very serious issue. Clear the way for them so that they'll come. Don't let any devil stop you. You are welcome. I know we're out of time. But please make your way to the front right now. Make your way to the front. We love you. No man condemns you. He can give you a new beginning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I salute every one of you here. I don't care what you have done or what you have not done. I want you to know that His Majesty can give you a new beginning. Hallelujah. Lift your right hand and say after me. Say, Lord Jesus, I believe in you. I believe you died and rose again. I'm tired of the way my life is. I surrender everything to you. Seriously and completely. From this night, take over my life. Be my Lord and Savior. Let your life come upon me. I break free from habits, from sins, and everything that destroys my life. From today, I'm a child of God. I am saved in the name of Jesus. Let me pray for you. Lord, I thank you for these ones. Unashamedly, they have come before you. Preserve them by your power in the name of the Lord Jesus. I pray that you will use them mightily in the name of Jesus. I break the power of sin over your life. You will never return, especially for those of you who are victims of addictions and smoking. You will never return to it again in the name of Jesus Christ. That power is broken from off your life in the name of Jesus Christ. Now, I want you to follow a gentleman. They will have your details. And then on Tuesday, unfailingly, please be around. Um, meet with the prayer department. 
and um, they'll fire you up. You'll be with them for at least a month. They will guide you. The gentleman is waving his hand. Salute them, everybody. Congratulate them. Stretch your hands towards a prayer request in one minute. Please, everybody, rise. We're rounding up. Stretch your hands towards a prayer request. Your request is here. Begin to speak. Prophesy. Prophesy over it in the name of Jesus Christ. Prophesy over it. Prophesy over it. Lord, unto you that answers prayer shall all flesh come. Are you praying? Shabakata Pratagadebosh. Rekatatatata Pratagadebosh. Lord, do miracles. Every spirit that is responsible for the troubles that are written here, we judge that spirit. Every spirit, every covenant, every influence. Makata Lato Desetebe. Mande brendo so so prida balada bas kapreti gede bele rebosh. Brado so prete kete bele rebosh. Every spirit responsible for barrenness, yeah, responsible for any setback. In the name of Jesus, we challenge it. By the blood of Jesus, we challenge it. By the blood of Jesus, we challenge it. By the blood of Jesus, we challenge it. Lord, let your people have testimonies. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We declare that every request, every request that is presented here is turned into a testimony. In the name of Jesus Christ. And you will stand to testify before the people of God. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Now lift your hands and receive the prophecy. I decree and I declare over you every confusion in your life every cry for direction right now in the name of Jesus may you receive direction for the next level of your life receive direction for the next level of your life receive direction for the next level of your life every area of confusion I arrest it right now you will hear a voice from behind telling you this is the way in the name of Jesus Christ for those who are students I pray for your academics the exams that are about to come your best result in your various institutions this exam is what will produce it in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ may you record five points in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ I pray for every family represented here whatever has stagnated your family by this anointing I declare move forward move forward move forward in the name of Jesus Christ everything that has covered your glory so that the glory of the Lord upon your life will not be seen in the name of Jesus we tear that veil off we tear that veil off by the power of the Holy Spirit. Whoever needs to help you before next miracle service, I call them forth into your life. Mysterious help us. Mysterious help us. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray for you. Fresh grace for prayer. Fresh anointing for prayer every lack of passion for the things of God I kill it right now in the name of Jesus every carnality and flesh and wordlessness and prayerlessness that is eating up your life it dies a natural death here tonight in the name of Jesus Christ I pray for you with these hands that are lifted go and begin to produce results go and heal the sick Go and open doors for the oppressed. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I pray for families that are trusting God for miracle marriages. We release those marriages right now. I pray for families that are trusting God for miracle jobs. We release those jobs right now. Please believe me as I pray. We release those jobs right now. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Anyone here who the devil is eyeing for death.
that the devil has said you will not see the end of this year in the name of jesus we lift up that embargo we lift up that embargo favor like you have never seen receive it right now open doors like you have never seen receive it right now breakthroughs like you have never seen receive it right now i speak life to every dying thing in your life in the name of jesus christ whoever has rejected you may they look for you in the name of jesus christ i command prophetic dreams mysterious spiritual experiences may god show you the solution to your problems in dreams and visions whoever is behind the failure of your life we command judgment upon them in the name of the lord jesus christ i prophesy unto you access to the mysteries of the kingdom access to deep revelation access to insight in the spirit whenever they are looking for men to favor may they find you may they find you in the name of jesus you are blessed in the city and blessed in the country you are blessed in your going out and blessed in your coming in every tongue that rises up against you will be judged in the name of jesus i declare that the seal of the blood is upon you you have no covenant with failure you have no covenant with death may god use you mightily 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 i declare may the mantle of honor come upon your life that mantle that makes men honor you mysteriously i release it upon your life receive it in the name of jesus receive it in the name of jesus the mantle of honor i pray for you extraordinary intelligence levels of mental acumen in the name of the lord jesus christ extraordinary intelligence i cast out the spirit of fear fear of the future fear of death i rebuke it from your life in jesus name and every depression upon your spirit i release you from it right now every voice that has told you you will not succeed we cancel that voice right now in the name of jesus finally i pray for you passion for the things of god hunger for intimacy with the holy spirit grace for fasting and prayer genuine fasting and prayer access to spiritual power activations of the gifts of the spirit visions and and the move of the spirit upon your life in the name of jesus christ father we give you all the praise in the name of jesus all those worshiping with us for the first time please make your way to the front right now very quickly we're really out of time we have two minutes and we're out please celebrate all those who are worshiping with us some have come from far some from near different states please come we have a prayer and a blessing for you celebrate them koinonia keep clapping they are coming may god bless all of you who have invited them their lives will never be the same in the name of jesus christ hallelujah for all of you who have come here this is koinonia god bless you for being here we're here every fridays is a meeting that is put together by eternity network international you're welcome to fellowship and worship with us again and again and your life will never be the same in the name of the lord jesus christ stretch your hands towards them saints of god and let's bless them we release the blessing upon this house over your life no keep standing don't worry you can stand i prophesy to you in the name of jesus you will leave this place and return with dramatic testimonies whatever you came here with is turned into a testimony in the name of jesus christ i see two of you standing here there's miracle marriage coming for two ladies here specifically i'm seeing two ladies that's the reason why you came specifically i prophesied miracle marriage for you in the name of jesus christ for one of you the person you are going to marry is a banker and he will come to you before october your wedding will happen before december 31st
in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ we decree and declare over your life you will carry an unusual unction and everyone who sees you will know that you have come before the presence of God there is someone here you are standing you are going to have like one week of prophetic encounter stretch one week every night repeatedly you're going to have different people come to teach you certain things and on the sixth night you're going to have an impartation it's like a hand that will be laid upon you it's not demonic in the name of the lord jesus christ we bless you return with evidences return with testimonies in the name of jesus christ thank you so much for coming we love you and we honor you please follow the gentleman waving his hands they'll welcome you more warmly on our behalf and then you have a few details celebrate them koinonia hallelujah hallelujah dearly beloved i hope you were blessed by this message I want you to keep doing something for this man of God, our man of God, Apostle Joshua Salmon. And that is, I want you to keep on praying for him, that the cause of the gospel may have free flow in him, that he may be granted boldness to continue with his commission of Jesus Christ, and that all provisions be given unto him as he continues in this journey of Christianity. And then, don't forget to like this video. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you are new here. Don't also forget to leave a comment in the comment section and then keep sharing, keep sharing abroad and let's all keep sharing Jesus. I'll see you again 